<laughs> We've got a great show for you guys today. Did you know that your car is a snitch? That's right. Mine's not. The snitch is going to get some, well, you know, um, hmm. repairs. More expensive. Bondo. <laughs> monthly insurance. Also, where is Kate? I forgot her name. I was going to say, let's see, what are all the Kates I know? Winslet? Uh, Kate Middleton. Where is Kate Middleton? That's right. We're going to be talking about the big scandal that's rocking the royal world. That's our headline topic. Not because either of us gives two flying shits about what goes on with the royals. Nope. But I didn't know who this was. <laughs> but because of the technology yeah. that seems to be at the core of what's going on. What else we got today? Yeah. Speaking of technology, EU AI regulation. Regulations, uh, are regulations good? Do we not want them? Do we want them? Heated debate. We'll really? talk about it. You, that, why do you pick such bad topics? <sighs> okay. It's like you prepare yourself for me to take all the good ones and you just work <laughs> your way from the bottom. AMD ups the hertz is like... All A right. AMD ups the what? The what? hertz? No, like, you, would you pick that you one? You could take that one? Why would you pick that one? Why, why would no, I No, I'm, I'm, I'm not picking that. Yeah, well, I'd yeah. pick anything. I'm saying, anything. why would you pick that? Weird notebook check article about our video? Would you pick that one? No. No? Okay. Uh, what do we have left? There's only two articles left. Would you pick FCC quadruples minimum internet speed required for broadband label? No, I would take the Airbnb bans cameras. Where's in that? Airbnbs. It's a, it's in oh, the main topic. I scrolled past that. I thought you took all the main topics. <laughs> Airbnb bans cameras. <laughs> oh, man. The show is brought to you by The Ridge, Squarespace, and Vessi. All right, why don't we jump right into our headline topic. Now, I Which know that? that you're an avid royal watcher, oh. so none of this is going to be news to you. But Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales. Sure. What does that mean? Um, I think it means that she's not Princess of the Fire Kingdom. Okay. Or lumpy space. But water. Um, because... Yeah. I, I'm not... Look, the rules seem really complicated because <laughs> the elements are like lumps, fire, candy. I don't really get it. The point is, there's a princess of Wales, and she's been the subject of intense news coverage and online speculation over the past few days after a Mother's Day image of her sent to various wire services turned out to have been significantly doctored. Wire now, services? Before, well, remember, like, Newswire. Okay. Yeah, like that kind that kind of that kind of wire services, not like money wiring. Yeah. So Luke, let's have a look at this and see if there's anything that raises you haven't read through the, the notes yet, right? No. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we're gonna bring it up on here. Is there anything about this picture that raises the alarm bells to you without without looking at anything else? No, 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 just, 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 stop. No, stop. I was just trying to zoom. Stop it. My eyes are bad. bad. I, you'll uh, be fine. I'm immediately looking at hands. Okay. Um how are those how are those hands looking for you? The hands seem fine. So her left hand, so right side for mm -hmm, us, mm -hmm. um, that like this thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Where it's just like they're all very straight and it's kind of a pan. Yep, yep, yep. It, it, actually I'm seeing it on the other side a little bit too. That's fairly common for once once AI imagery got good at fingers, they started just making them like Here's mm -hmm. a, a board of fingers, mm -hmm. but it's not quite happening. Her one finger there is a little bit separated. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. no, I think the hands are fine. Yep. Um, I mean, I couldn't help noticing that this is sharp and this hand is extremely blurry. Very blurry, yeah. Um, also, that That's appears to be in the same plane as this hand, which is not especially blurry. Yeah. Um, it, it looks like it's been touched up and and doctor to a certain degree but that would happen no matter what any picture of royals is going to be touched up is there anything here that jumps out to you as potentially problematic yeah wait what's going on oh the, there's a sniper the, the, there's a sniper oh my duck goodness. kate the Sorry. hair on the the right <laughs> side of her head is like mm. super fuzzy mm -hmm. and i don't mean f oh man i can't use that term it's very like blurred and also yeah like where's her shirt Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It just looks like a shadowed version of Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean that could be a thing. Yeah, there's there could be some there, there could, could be, be some fun. biz. There has been some surprisingly serious and poorly done question mark doctoring to her hair on the one side. I don't mm -hmm. know what's up with that. 
Uh, the, okay, her whole head looks like it might so not originate from this photo. Yeah. So here's the thing. Oh. 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 Okay, let's look really closely at the, the non-squared one on the left. Looks really closely on the right one. Her cheek dimples, how, are those exactly the same? It looks like maybe no. Uh, sir? It looks like maybe la yes. Look at how in... Well, oh, yeah, but she's going to have cheek dimples no matter what. So, like, look at how deep they are, like how wide her smile mm -hmm. is, but how deep they are. Now scroll up and look in the other one. Okay, yeah. Because well, well, this is have, overlaid. Like, we can't really look, have at a look at that. Let's we'll look at the dimples, okay? It's really blurry. It's very blurry. It's blurry. Why is it so blurry? The um, kids aren't very blurry. No, the kids are the kids are not blurry. The kids are pretty well defined. So basically, let's so let's ru let's run through this. Let's run through this. Yeah. Middleton's last public appearance was on Christmas Day, which for those who math is if I didn't work here, my last public appearance would have been a long time ago. Okay. All right. The point is, her job is literally to make public appearances. So. So that's what, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, so her last public appearance was on Christmas Day. On January 17th, the royal family announced she would be undergoing scheduled abdominal surgery and would return to the public eye around Easter, which, in fairness, uh, is not until a couple of weeks from now. Most people accepted this explanation, but there was some question as to why she would need to cancel weeks of upcoming events if this surgery was truly expected and planned. Ah, uh, Yes. That's a good point. While nothing truly suspicious had happened yet, people were being extremely conspiratorial about all of this on some segments of social media by about late February. And this is pretty typical of royal watchers, you know, whether it's, whether it's, um, uh, help me out, the actress, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, uh, or whether it's uh, Kate and William, people are always... Meghan Markle? That's her name, right? She was an actress? She's on Suits. I've never seen that. Okay, it doesn't matter. The, po the point is <laughs> that... Oh, okay, the point is that, that, that people follow the royals extremely closely, and anything even remotely resembling a scandal seems to blow up pretty spectacularly unless it's Prince Andrew. In which case... <laughs> We Apparently just all seem to cool with it. Yeah, uh, we, yeah we're, he went to what island? Yeah. Huh? Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Uh, okay. Hawaii island. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. This Mother's Day photo received initial scrutiny because it had a few obvious inconsistencies, like, and Luke didn't even notice this, even though he is a self-professed expert on the royals. Kate was not wearing a wedding ring. Wait. And... No, I looked for that. What hand do you wear wed wedding ring on? <laughs> tell, Is it your right? Tell me, tell me, tell... Oh, oh man. Could, could you be... <laughs> Is it your left? Could you be less, you know, into the whole Where's matrimony yours? thing? It's like, it goes on your left hand. Oh, like, then we should be able to see it. Uh, yes, we should definitely right. be able to see it. I thought it, it might it. have been under the kid's arm. But Not only okay. that... But there was a fully unfurled, or there's a tree with fully unfurled green leaves in the background, despite it being supposedly early March. Observers then noted clear wait, wait, signs. Wait, when is Mother's? I thought Mother's Day is in May. Mother's Day is like coming up. Yeah, but this is, I don't know, it's a Mother's Day photo. I don't know. Don't worry about it. So wait, they took it. it like way ahead of Mother's Day? I don't know when Day UK photo? Mother's Day is, okay? What are y'all doing over there, huh? The point is. Observers then noted clear signs of editing, including heavy use of a blurring yeah. tool and inconsistencies in the family's hair and clothing. Uh, wire services generally only allow small cosmetic edits like cropping and red eye removal, leading them to retract the picture only a few hours later. A tweet attributed to Kate Middleton claimed fault for the bad Photoshop job, but that has not stopped posts insisting that the photo was entirely AI generated or that the princess's face was Photoshopped into the photo over that of another woman. However, according to Tom Warren of The Verge, the photo's metadata indicates that it was shot on a Canon 5D Mark IV and edited using a 2022 version of Photoshop from before AI features were added. Some online sleuths have insisted that Middleton's face in the photo matches and was taken from her cover on Vogue, while detractors say that it simply looks similar because it is a picture of the same woman with the same face. I mean, the lighting is different, her bottom teeth are slightly showing in the Mother's Day photo, etc., etc. Yeah, and like, to be completely honest, if you look at a bunch of pictures of Linus at, like, various conventions posing with people, the, like, I am taking a photo face, yeah. It's pretty similar. Yeah. So, is it necessarily... 
the exact same face. Um, I don't 100% think so. I don't 100% think so, but I also do not know for sure that it isn't. Yeah, I see what they're getting at. They they are they are very similar. But uh, you said this is a person whose job is to make public appearances. They're going to have a I'm smile. taking a photo face. I'm, I'm taking a photo smile. Yeah. Uh, so our question here, because realistically, I don't think any not either of us is other than a general concern for anyone who has been disappeared. Uh, I don't think either of us is particularly into the whole Royals thing. So if there's any intrigue in like, you know, oh, is this how they're, you know, going to soft announce a divorce or, you know, whatever, because there was some speculation that um, not Harry, not Andrew, the other one, William, Jeff, uh, that's not a royal name, Luke, (laughs) King Jeffrey, Game of Thrones. (laughs) Is not real. <laughs> I think it was Joffrey anyway, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I only read the first book. I, I have a I have a whole thing where I won't consume content until it's all produced. So I'm waiting for him to finish all the books. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. That might be a problem. He's actually going to die before I get to if read you, Game of Thrones. If you Google King Jeff, it's just really ripped dudes. <laughs> <laughs> How that happened. I mean, maybe she was the one cheating with King Jeff. Hey, hey, maybe. I wouldn't blame her. Dude, King Jeff is Mind jacked. you, I don't know how much of his testicles are left at that point. None. <laughs> but he's ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares at that point? Oh, man. Don't do steroids. Um, um, <laughs> what are we even talking about? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, okay. The point is, the point is, we, we're, we're not royal watchers, but this no. is really interesting because... Except for King Jeff. Because... This is interesting because it raises a really interesting question with the way that this is being covered by the mainstream media and with the way that uh, topics like Photoshop over the years and more recently AI are making their way into the public consciousness. This feels like a really significant moment. Because you and I on The WAN Show, and you guys who watch The WAN Show, you're dialed into this stuff. You know what the capabilities of large language models are. I mean, you watched us reacting live to the launch of ChatGPT and interacting with the thing, right? Uh, You're, uh, whether it's, you know, Mid Journey or Dolly, you know, you're you're looking at the ever-evolving capabilities uh, of these, uh, of these, Uh, AI image generators and stuff like that. So you guys are dialed into it. But this right here is sparking a conversation with the normies, you know, with the aunts and uncles and nieces and the extended family. All your cousins are talking about this and they're asking the question, is anything that I am looking at real real anymore? And with the amount of bots on things like x.com and other various websites, it's like, Speaking what, of what which, we're streaming. We're streaming on X.com yeah. for the first time today. Yeah. Yeah, we're live. We're live on X. Or are we? Done. Done. I hope done. so. <laughs> they have I haven't AI checked in a while. Video. What if so, you just combined that and audio? Whatever. Luke, let me push back yeah. yes. on one of your hypotheses. Okay. My hypotheses? One of your hypotheses. Okay. So you <laughs> you had said it's it's quite it's quite probable that she has a photo taking face. Yeah. Okay. So what if, yeah, this is slightly different. What if it's slightly different, though, because an AI was trained on this photo and a handful of other photos? What if it looks so similar because kind of like we've seen very famous works of art basically spat out with slight alterations by AI image generators... You see where I'm going with this, right? I get it. And I think the point is like that, that everything that exists will have doubt cast on it moving forward. And this is kind of the sign of that. And I do agree. Yeah. Whether this is real or not, the fact that so many eyes are on it and there is such a, you know, a lot of people that are saying one thing or the other are saying it with a certain amount of uncertainty just shows that you, you, you can't really be certain about like Watch these days remember when we were looking at sora when they announced that yeah. that big upgrade and we were watching that car racing along a track 
in all these different environments, right? Okay, it's, it's autumn now. It's underwater now. It's a sunny day. It's raining. There is absolutely no reason why I couldn't take that Vogue cover shoot, that Vogue cover photo, and be like, okay, it's overcast today. Can you adjust my lighting based on that? That is well within the capabilities of AI image alteration tools that we have today. And just because they're using an older version of Photoshop for something on this image, I mean, that doesn't necessarily... Man, see here, I'm 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 falling in I'm falling into the trap. To someone, metadata for a file, to my knowledge, can be altered. Yeah. So okay, was it shot on a five five D whatever mark whatever? My okay, my pushback on that is if they would go that far, I feel like they would have done a better job touching up things like her hair and other various like it is confusing isn't it it it, it's it's honestly like a poorly done photoshop job it raises a it raises a whole other layer of questions because here's my first question right so we talked about already that this is someone who is a public figure and is accustomed to public appearances yeah why in god's name would you pick the cover of a vogue magazine as your picture as your as your choice for the mother's day picture Oh yeah! Like out of the out of the enor- so many options. out of the mountain. I don't think that that's necessarily it, though, because like you said, they might have used a variety of other images as well. That's, that's just that's just her. I'm taking a photo face. Um, like, let's see. What's her name? Kate Middleton. Kate um, Middleton. <laughs> images. Okay, so you're basically looking to see. Oh man, he's going into sleuth mode. Do you have a photo taking face? A lot of these are candid. Yeah, which means no. Um, I don't know how old this photo is. Down and right is not candid. You you went that meant just meant down and right from where your mouse was. That no left. Oh my god. This one. This one. This one. Down. This one. Down. This one. Down. This one. Yes. Oh, that's not candid. That looks quite old though. It's yeah. very similar too. It's similar-ish. I wouldn't say it's nearly as similar as the the similar ones. Agreed. I saw no, I saw another similar. one when I was uh, when I was poking around in this conspiracy theory where they're like, oh yeah, uh, there's this picture of her and the prince in a car, and this picture is also ripped off of somewhere else. That didn't make it into our notes. I'm not sure if that one's been debunked already or something this like is, that. I mean, like th- this is at a completely di- hello. Uh, I got you. There Did you go. I get locked out? I don't know. Did I lose permissions? I don't know. Uh, this one's like uh, uh, an action shot and down on a weird angle. She's making the exact same smile. Yeah, that's fair. That's like, fair. I I, th- I think this is a thing. Yeah, it, it could be a thing, but it could... I think more realistically, it could be like an AI generated thing. You can go in and edit why the metadata. Even, that, so the, why would you even bother? Like this is the, the like world's most simple AI or uh, Photoshop job. Why know. would you bother with AI generation? I don't know. What's the point? Luke, like, why, like, there's an entire generation of people who are, you know, adjusting their boobs and curving the stuff behind them and adjusting their waist generation. and adjusting their, adjusting their pecs and adjusting their facial hair. And I think this is everyone. I, 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 I don't, don't think this is a single generation. Okay, multiple generations. Okay. I, I don't think Gen X is quite as into it as millennials and Zoomers. You don't see, you don't see as much of that. Okay. You see some. All right. You see some. So, right. so, but we've got generations of people who are <laughs> making what I think you would judge to be unnecessary changes to their pictures. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're asking, why are they doing this? No, 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 no. I'm saying, why would they use AI instead oh, of see. someone just Photoshopping it? Because... Yeah, that's fair. If, if the job... Because, like, honestly, the, the thing that looks to me like what might have happened is a head replacement, right? Yeah. What do you mean? People were doing that convincingly when I was in high school. Like... Yeah. This this is not like super advanced. Yeah, you don't need AI tools to do that. Why would you even bother? And then when it comes out and you see these massive blurry portions, why wouldn't you go like, "Welp, let's go, we let's go one layer deeper into the conspiracy war in here." Sure, they did it to make us talk about it. 
See, that's sick. I like that a lot. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't doubt think it, so. But I love I don't it think so. I think time. my favorite comment about that that I saw from someone, I forget who, was like, yeah, maybe if the queen was still in charge, but realistically, the rest of these guys are a bunch of bumbling idiots. There's no way they had that much game sense. That like, honestly sounds very real. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. See, that's the thing is I, I, I legitimately don't pay that much attention. I just saw this trending and I was like, okay, this is very interesting. And I think it's a, it's a really fascinating topic of conversation. Conversation. Um, Have you gotten any king cash yet? King cash? Yeah. What's king cash? Canadian dollars with the king on them. Oh, God. Unless it's Mufasa, I'm not interested. <laughs> I haven't gotten any king cash yet. Are we printing king cash? Yeah. Oh, man. I guess we would have had to eventually. I, yeah. I kind of thought maybe something, we could stall until he dies. Something and then... that's interesting, too, is your passport says from the queen. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh no, I have to get a new one. I, I don't know. I guess it's going to be... Maybe. I guess it's Do they all expire now? Like what happens? I don't know. I, I, like, I, was, I, I was like, I swear it says from the Queen. And I checked my own passport and was like, yep. My passport is authorized by someone who isn't alive anymore. How does that work? I have no idea. Like Canadian passports uh, effectively say, um, the Queen says this person can travel. Please right. allow them to travel. That's like effectively, you know, it's much longer than that and written cool. Um, but like, man, what does that mean now? Dude, I got to say with the, with the, the gap in both time and societal and technological advancement between Queen Elizabeth II's coronation and um, uh, King Charles's coronation, I, I dipped in for about 30 seconds of just highlight clips of the whole thing. And I was just kind of like, huh? Robin Williams, Jumanji, what year is it? You know, like it just, it felt so bizarre and out of place. It felt like fiction. It felt like a scene in a, in a movie about a time long past and a kingdom long ago. Like the whole thing felt so silly the i the idea of you know god ordaining a, a monarch that whatever it's like yeah we we moved past that so long ago like she reigned for like 70 years oh, or something yeah. like that yeah and so much has changed in that time that it just the whole thing felt so silly like my entire life i just kind of accepted yeah like queen elizabeth or whatever she lives in a in a castle somewhere and she's on our money and you know i mean Honestly, when she was younger, she's kind of hot. So, like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just trying to get. I'm just trying to get a rise. It took a second for him to process that. Well, because I was reading. Apparently, <laughs> Canada unveils a new passport with okay. more security features and a nod to King Charles. Okay, so we'll have a look at that in a second. The point is just like it never. It never really occurred to me. It was just a normal thing that I didn't think about. Yeah. Like yeah, the queen's on the money. Who cares? Yeah. But then now that it's changing, I'm sitting here going, "Why don't you wait? Put, wait, 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 wait. Why don't you put Terry Fox on the money? Please." What? Please. Please what? Put Terry Fox yeah, on the money. Yeah, put Terry Fox on the money. Yeah. That'd be way good. Cool. Speaking of it's which. It's like the most based Canadian you, thing okay, ever. Okay, do you know about this? I don't know whether they were watching Wan Show or not. Terry Fox Foundation reached out. No way. Yeah. That's so, pretty sick. So we're, okay. No promises in terms of the depth of what the collaboration. Um, yeah. But don't, don't worry about that. Don't speculate anything. Okay, I don't want okay, people okay, to get okay, the wrong okay. idea. All right, all right, all right. But all right. at the very least, you and I are going to wear Terry Fox Foundation shirts oh, for a WAN show. Sick. So that we've got locked in as part of, a, part of a campaign that they're doing in collaboration with Ryan Reynolds. They basically want awesome. any Canadian that has any kind of audience to wear a Terry Fox Foundation shirt. So we're going to wear some nice. shirts. And then... If we can do anything uh, a little bit deeper, then then we will. We're, we'd be very excited to do something like that. But yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, I got like two emails in a row. One was from some AI company that I've wanted to collaborate with, and that was. And then five minutes later, I heard from the Terry Fox Foundation. I'm like, this is a good day. <laughs> this is a pretty good day. My those, phone's blowing up for all the right are, reasons. Yeah, today. those are good days. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, no, we'll we'll tell we'll tell you we'll tell you the story of Terry Fox. Man, it feels like it almost feels like you can tell that story as many times as as you want, right? It's like it's it's a bedtime story. Dad, you tell me the story of Terry Fox. Yeah, okay, for sure. We'll tell you the story of Terry Fox again, but we're gonna wait until we've got the shirts and we can tell you a little bit about what the foundation is doing yeah, these days. Sounds I'm, good. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um. Anyway, okay, let's have a look at the new passport. You want to show me the new passport? Sure. All right. Yeah. There's a front. 
Okay. There's the inside. Okay. Cool. There's some corn. That looks like... Is it actually going to be colored like that? I don't know. I, honestly, I'm kind of into it. How do you put the cool. stamps there, though? I don't know. Oh, maybe there's like alternate Oh, here designs. we go. Yeah, yeah. There's the interior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. There's a surprising lack of like Canadian native imagery. I think that's Canadian native imagery. Is it? I think so. These just look like school kids in like rubber boots. Um, I doubt it. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> wow. This seems so unnecessary. Other than, I guess, that it says the queen in our passport. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Should we jump into our next topic? Sure. Cars spying on us? Yeah. Okay. Do you know about this? I didn't until I read this thing. Okay, let's let's hear about it. Some car manufacturers, including Acura, ugh, except it won't affect my car, uh, GM, Honda, Hyundai, mm, Acura and Honda? Interesting. Okay. I mean, that's the same company, but sounds good. Um, <laughs> Hyundai and Mitsubishi have optional gamified features in their connected car apps to track the rate the user's driving. Track and rate. Track and rate. Okay, I was like, what? Uh, track and rate the user's driving. These are often framed as coaching apps to improve driving safety and award users with points for good driving, which is actually kind of neat. This driving kind of boring, so if you can try to do that, that's cool. Um, I like ways for that. Like, I, I like reporting things and I get points for it and stuff. It doesn't matter, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Driving's it also, so boring. It like, also tells me when there are cops. <laughs> Nice. Um, according to a report from the New York Times, these car companies sell information from these apps to data brokers, which then sell it to insurers who use that in their determination of a driver's premium. Womp, womp. It's like selling your medical data. Uh, according, to a wor to, according to workers at GM, the revenue from the OnStar smart driver app is in the low millions of dollars. Further, some GM drivers were, uh, were tracked despite never having enabled any of those tracking features. One Cadillac owner, who said he was not aware of OnStar Smart Driver, found himself denied insurance by seven different insurance companies before learning that his vehicle had been sending data that he was often braking or accelerating hard, as well as engaging in some speeding. Heaven forbid they see my driving. I was just going to say, data. neither of us would ever get insurance again, which would be a problem. <laughs> uh, I would definitely get insurance and I would never to work. And I would never drive with hard braking. I would never or hard get insurance again because my acceleration, my, my discount would bring me to zero dollars because mm -hmm. I drive perfectly. Yep. And there would be no, it would break the system. Yes. It would break the system it and there'd be no, work. there'd be no way for him to get insurance. Such a, such a shame. Scout's honor. I just drive too well. Yeah, me too. I'd have to go out there and unfortunately intentionally speed in like an abandoned parking lot or mm. something just to be able to get insurance. Yeah, just to seem human. Yeah. Unfortunately. Agreed. <laughs> According to GM, it shares select insights with data brokers, but customers agree to share their data when they sign the user agreement. Other manufacturers, such as Kia, say they require additional explicit consent from owners before sh sharing such information. Meanwhile, the Finnish Transport and Communications Agency has detected... Oh, this is a separate topic. Yeah, let's I was talk just going to say, after. what? Uh, so, let's okay. talk about this. Yeah. Remember when I was talking about how this whole 23andMe data breach thing and... I went off on this thing about how anything to do with your DNA is going to impact your insurance at some point if you're American and you should basically be caring about this a lot. And people were like, yeah, but the laws and it's like a not insignificant number of people were treating me like I was some kind of tinfoil hat conspiracy nut or something like that. Guys, do you think the law matters to the people who are, <coughs> excuse me. Handling your data? Do you think they care about the law? What no. punishment is there for this? No one's even talking about that. As far as I can tell, there isn't any. There's no consequences. And even if there is, it'll be a tiny slap on the wrist. Exactly. <clears throat> and you've got to understand, like, these are things that 
this didn't ju- this isn't like oh one car manufacturer was no. talking about this and a whistleblower was like oh let's make sure this never happens we got to inform the pop multiple car manufacturers a lot of the biggest ones are running these programs and making millions of dollars on the sale of your data yeah and like i my brain goes to like okay maybe if they were only allowed to offer discounts based on good driving maybe yeah, if they but, weren't allowed to do anything else but then they just shift the prices up no no then what they do is they use an ai learning model and they basically tell it determine the appropriate premium for everyone and when the regulators come knocking they go well i don't know how it works it's a black box and it goes oh speaking of which couldn't help noticing that you deny insurance to anyone with a certain skin color well i mean we have no way of knowing how to, uh, 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 uh. Like, that, that's the that's going to be the defense 100 times out of 100 they're I, just going to hide behind i just left the train on the tracks exactly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't. We don't. I mean, there the, is no good way. Keep old dumb cars. Let's and you go. know what? And you got to understand how powerful insurance companies are now. Like, all they have to do is say, "Well, the alternative is we're just going to not cover anyone in your state," and yep. they walk away. Yeah, which has happened. And don't imagine they won't. It's happening right now. People trying to get home insurance in freaking Florida. It's a struggle. It's a huge struggle, and so. You know, you look at this and you go, oh, yeah, well, the, here's the here's the safeguards we could put them. No, as soon as this data exists, it will be exploited. Like, honestly, I'm on the one hand, I was happy to not see Volkswagen on the list because I drive a fancy Volkswagen, essentially. And they own a bunch of cars or a ca- bunch of car companies. And if I had to, if there was, you know, a, a short list of brands that I would think are just going to be like, yeah, no. And just be all driving experience all the time and we'll just charge more for the cars to keep ourselves profitable. Porsche would probably be on that list. Dodge. (laughs) But on the other hand, I don't really trust anybody. No. At all. Not when there's not when there's millions of dollars at play. Like, is this even conclusive? Do they know this is all the companies or is this the ones that they know about? That I don't know. A scathing report from the New York Times. So like. It's possible that some companies just didn't get caught. It's a maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what GDPR thinks about this. I don't know. I mean, it's possible they're not collecting the data there. It's also possible they're just collecting it surreptitiously and doing nothing with it while they while they bide their time. Like, that's, that's the thing is the, the number of... Okay, you know what? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If there was a data collection program like this, how many people, like with with beating hearts and functioning lungs, like how many human beings would have to know about it? You get what I mean, right? So everyone could know about the gamified thing, but how many people would have to know about this database? Not very many, because you could collect it all and not tell the people that are collecting it that you're selling it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, not very many. Very few. Give me a number. Obviously, at the at the CEO level, yeah, you, we're, you'd we're have getting, to know. The, the, we're getting into company scales that I'm not used to operating in. You, um, you'd have your top sales execs. They would know. Your top IT execs would know. So you've got at least a half a dozen right there. And then probably a, a couple not, you know, top execs, but trusted IT people. So I don't know. You're probably dealing with 20 or less. But again, we're, we're dealing with company scales that I have, I have no real understanding of. So I'm not really sure. The, I don't. the fact that they're able to tie this to an individual person is mind blowing to me. One, one of my, sorry. Like if it was aggregate, if it was aggregate, then I'm kind of looking at it going, yeah, what do you expect was going to happen? But the fact that this can be tied to an individual operator of the vehicle absolutely oh, yeah. blows me away oh, right yeah. now. Like yeah. this is a next level betrayal. And a, a fun little pastime I've been doing recently is looking at surprising employee counts at various companies. And this is part of my like, I don't really know, dude. Because I'll, I'll look at like some company that has basically, they have like one software function that they make 
and they sell, I usually find this is in B2B, but they sell it for whatever they make effectively one thing. It like pretty much hasn't changed over the course of like five years. And then you're like, I don't know, this probably runs on like five to 50 employees. And then it's like 1500 and you're like, what, like, what, <laughs> what, what, what do you all do? Like, is, is this like 20 engineers and 1480 salespeople or like, how does this work? The Wiley says, it sounds like they're tying it to the VIN, not to a person. And that's fair enough, but the number of people driving a particular VIN is generally going to be, num- is going to be in the air, in the range of one to three. Yeah, You know, I'm talking like, you know, two heads of household and, you know, one kid, maybe, you know, maybe four or maybe a roommate or whatever else it's, you could count them on one hand. And because you're tracking all the, you're tracking the car's driving characteristics, you can probably fingerprint them to a degree. Honestly, yeah. Without much effort, because you probably got geolocation information as well. So, okay. Because these data brokers, a lot of what they do is... Oh, the, all this information is, you know, not identifiable, except it's extremely fingerprintable and we buy it from all of the different services so we can tie it all together and build a nice little stack. And it's, it might not be like, you know, we know this person's igna- exact name, although a lot of cases they would, um, but it, it might be like, this is, you know, this is information we have on this type of a person. Yeah. And then this is the type of person this is. So yes. rather than being individuals, you sort them into buckets. Yeah. So that's a way to kind of... And those buckets can get ever narrower and narrower and narrower. So. But as long as they don't make it all the way to one person, <laughs> well, then you're compliant. Yeah. Ugh. We don't know what the box does. Yuck. Um, Rob the Tank says, insurance analyst here, our models are getting really good. So this data matters. Uh, what's scary is the next step for the big companies is tying it to financial databases. <sighs> what would that mean? Charging based on your like income? <laughs> That's kind of a scary one. Is that what that would mean? Because uh, why? I could see it. So I could <clears throat> see that going a number of different ways. Um, I could see that going to... Um, it. What, what it sounded like to me was that he was saying that... Shoot, where was I going with this? Crap, 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 crap. You make money, Elijah. Shush. Um, crap, crap, crap. Financial databases. Ah, whatever. There was, there, there, there was somewhere that I was going with that, but I forget. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. MCXL says, okay, so they could already charge more or less based on your credit score. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why does your credit score affect your insurance rates? It's like an abstracted thing. I actually, I, I can't really understand that. Me neither. That doesn't make any sense. I don't think I've ever been credit scored for my insurance. Is that an American thing? It could be. <clears throat> I know Americans like are more on the whole credit score thing than we are. So maybe. Uh, it's Hurley Time says, insurance underwriter here. Models are getting really good, but the industry has been losing money on auto for more than the last 10 years, at least in the US, which doesn't surprise me at all actually yeah. and that's that's where we got to that point that i was making about how if you try to clamp down on this behavior they're basically going to come back and say okay well then we're not insuring a single vehicle in your entire state we're going to just walk away and you're going to kind of go oh um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, we kind of need that because it's it will be pandemonium <laughs> especially in a place where health care is covered by insurance not by universal health care Right. It would, it, it, it would be like the destruction. People would be afraid to drive if they knew that not only like if, if you couldn't if you couldn't get insurance and if you didn't know for sure if the other drivers had insurance. Like I, I saw some people in chat earlier complaining about how auto insurance is mandatory at all. It's like it's not for you, brother. Yeah. It's for the person you I hit. I really want you to have auto insurance. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, Cause but I actually don't care about your feelings here, and that's a fact. You need automotive insurance because you need it. <laughs> it's, it's not for you. And it may benefit you, but it's not really for you. Yeah. It's to cover your butt yep. when you whack into someone else's car. Yeah, Electrobot says nationalized slash socialized insurance. So, also no, to be honest. As a place where um, we kind of have this weird public private partnership yeah. insurance monopoly for automotive insurance, it's not perfect. Yeah. 
I would even go as far as to say there have been times when it's been pretty catastrophically bad. So, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Is insurance a tax write off? No. But, well, it can be. I know it can be. But, but what's always a tax write off is our special merch item for the yeah, week. Okay, wait, what? So, Luke. I don't understand. Was trying to understand this before the show. Why don't, don't we? It. We're going to jump on LTTstore.com. We're going to jump on LTTstore.com. Okay. Not, not only do I not understand it, I, I don't understand it in multiple ways. This is the tax write off shirt. Yeah. This shirt is a tax write off. It actually contains the full text of the tax write off rant. Um, which That's is sick. I like that. Yep. It's not it's not an infinite money glitch, okay guys? This is how it works, okay? We've got a we've got a ripped up hundred dollar LTT bill with um a dead queen on it. Or sorry, oh. wait, no, they no they, That's they an American they, bill. They keep the same people on their money. I know it's an American bill. It's Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> doesn't matter the point is that we have the tax write-off shirt so luke you, you had some questions about the tax yeah, write-off okay shirt. yeah let's start with the uh the like less related ones sure. and the less important ones. yeah absolutely why pink and periwinkle well it's a write-off okay yeah the corporations they're writing it off so it's because we have extra of those colors of shirts it's because we're we, we're gonna write them off okay so here's my here's mm -hmm. where the root of it comes at yeah we already sell, this is, I'm not even trying to pump us up. We sell relatively cheap shirts. Like if you look at other mm -hmm. creator merch, I think our shirts are generally superior and also cheaper. Yes. Why are we selling one that's 50% of that? So that we can write it off. How does that, what? Is this actually a strategy? It's a write off. Are we, are, we're, so we're actually doing that. We're, well, we're, we're gonna... just setting a really bad price and then writing off the like losses on it. I mean, that's how write-offs work. It's not a way of making money, Luke. It's right on the shirt. Right at the very bottom of the shirt. Look, do I need to remind you but why? that the entire rant is here? But why? It's not why a did, way... Why did we decide to not make money? It's not a way of making more f***ing money, Why did we Luke? actively decide... And, okay... Here's, because that's here's, not how that f***ing works. Okay, so here's the here's the the thing that really grinds my gears, Yes, right? you wanna, yes, tell you wanna, me. Wanna, okay. Do tell me. Remember the story that we talked about... about I think it was last week. Like, why Nick got hired? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For what? I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Because of, like, business decisions that don't make the company money. Right. Made by you. But we're going to write it off. And then Nick runs Create a Warehouse. Yeah. This isn't going to make money. No, but we're going to write it off. What's going on? We're writing it off, Luke! Imagine we had a single MBA that worked here. I think they just freak out. I think they just run out screaming. It's like, what are you guys doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why do we do this stuff? Like, uh, uh, do you have any more questions? Dan, do you have any questions? Uh, how long until they're going to ship? <laughs> oh, uh, usually it's. Do takes you get a bulk a discount on all the external auditing that's going to happen to happen to you? Uh, it'll be available until. Yeah, that too. Are we just asking for it? Uh, they should be shipped by April 12th, like, 2024. Is it not going to uh, raise any flags that we sold a shirt for less than $10 when, like, no one does that and then wrote it off? Like, are they not going to be like, hey, um, actually, you have a history of selling t shirts for 20 bucks, a very long and fairly unbroken history of selling t shirts mm -hmm. for $20. Why did you price it like this? Uh, so that we could write it off. Oh. Are you going to tell the government that? Yeah. Isn't that bad? No. It's completely above board. Yes. We're going to write it off. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I think you were wondering about the colors before. Why, how, why how, pink how can and periwinkle? How can I achieve escape velocity? Can you help me with this? Pink and, pink and periwinkle. Uh, well, you had questions about that? What's the fastest and easiest way to achieve escape velocity? Escape velocity? Yeah. On what? The planet. The planet. Oh, oh, I see. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'd like to address your question about the colors. All right, yeah. Well, it's so that we can write them off. <laughs> were they more expensive than, like, normal colors? <laughs> No. No, but they're great for writing off. I think because we have too many of them, Dan. I think. 
No, but that would that would be that would be an astute business decision, and it doesn't seem like that happens here anymore. Um, so I'm going to go through our notes in the doc here on the tax write-off sale. Uh, you've seen the memes, and now you can buy the memes for yourselves. The shirt is ten dollars. In the Why? words, in the words of Linus Sebastian, a tax write-off is not a way of making more f***ing money, and neither is this sale because we Why are losing money on it. What the Why? shirt? Why? The shirt is a tax write-off. Do you know how much it costs to get a shirt printed at our printer? It's ten dollars, no. isn't it? It's it no, but it's multiple dollars. It's it's multiple there's dollars. There's also shipping and handling. They yeah. gotta pick oh, yeah. it. Every time they pick it, there's oh, right. dollars. I'm just trying to feel out over how much money we're gonna lose on this. Enough to write off. Okay. Not only is the shirt only $10, but we have decided to fire sale our remaining 30x30 30 30 CPU pillows and color block hoodies for just $14.99. Now go Wait, ahead, the hoodies Luke. are $14.99? Go ahead, Luke, and ask me, what's up with the pricing <laughs> of, I, the, of the color block hoodie? What was, is, was that one $70? Go back up to the... T oh, my God. Here we go. So the, the tech-linked color block hoodie. Go ahead and ask me about this price. Why did we choose this price? Why, why did we choose that price? So that we could write it off. <laughs> They're taking up too much warehouse space. <laughs> it's the tax write-off sale. <sighs> oh, there's even more merch messages now. <laughs> We are not going to be able to get to them all today, but enjoy your enjoy your tax write off shirt, hoodie, and CPU pillow. Uh, <laughs> the merch messages per minute. Wow, the rate at which we're losing money is actually sort of incredible. Ah! No, we're not losing money. I'm dying. <laughs> it's funny because like my dashboard. Taryn, dash. Taryn goes on vacation for one week, and this happens. <laughs> Luke's still going to get Wait, his paycheck. Wait, did you do this so while, while Taryn was gone? Is Taryn gone? Well, he's not here. No, I think I think I just made that up. Okay, so, I was like, well, I yeah, know, I he flew somewhere yesterday. I think, yeah, but I had a call <laughs> to get a new him. job because his company's going <laughs> I didn't down. Have a call with him. I had lunch with him this week, so I was like, how did he? How does he do? <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke. I'm sorry, Luke. S zero zero four AWS <laughs> says also don't forget that Retro Screwdriver still gets you free shipping on your entire order. <laughs> yeah, that code's still active. Why? So that we can write it off, Luke! Oh my god! Are you thick? <laughs> but how long, how long is this? I'm not uh, sure. Until we can write it off. <laughs> okay, okay. So, in all seriousness, to explain, you know, wh why we're writing these off, okay? It's to make a point. I wanted to demonstrate how a write-off works. A write-off is not a way of making money. So we already addressed when I buy something, right, and I and I write off the cost of that. I didn't I, I, I didn't make money magically. I personally actually make less money. I have an asset that the business owns, but I actually make less money. So you can write off a purchase, right? So that's really it's more of like a tax deduction. Okay, it's tax deductible purchases. Okay, so this is more of a of a tax write-off, okay? So you take something, let's say this water bottle that you paid, let's say $10 for, okay? You sell it for $5. That is at least a loss of $5, and depending on how you do the math, there could actually be greater losses associated with it in the handling, the storage of the item, um, in the... Yeah, I mean, mostly mostly that, I guess. Handling and storage of the item. Um, so you could have a greater than, you know, $5 loss on this, on this $10 item that you sold for $5. Um, that money that you lost, be it $5 or be it, you know, 6 or 7 or wh whatever, it, whatever it adds up to, gets deducted from your net income <laughs> for the year. So if, let's say hypothetically... Our entire company made $100 for the year. Normally, we would pay about, I'm rounding here, but we'd pay about a quarter of that in corporate income tax. Okay? But if instead of making $100, we took that $5 that we didn't make on that one item we sold and we deducted that from our net income, well, now we made only $95 and we'll owe about a quarter of that in corporate income tax. We wrote it off. So but why would why would you why would you go out of your way like, to prove up why are, yes. why do you have to spend so much money to prove points? 
This is now a personal question. Um, because this is not the, this is not this is not only the first time. This is this is one of many. Hold on a second. I'm not quite done. So so if you look at that 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 write off, right? All we've saved is the taxes we would have owed on five dollars. So we've saved two dollars and fifty cents on our taxes, but we lost five dollars plus. So I'm trying to illustrate that when you lose money selling a product, when you write it off, you still lose money. You lose money on the sale. You lose money on your total net income it for just, the year. It's like a shock absorber. Yes, essentially. Because you're not paying... You're still getting shocked. You're, you, you, you pay taxes on profit. Relax. You pay taxes on profit. So if you didn't make the money, you don't pay income tax on it. That's in a nutshell. and It's way more complicated. And it, but in a nutshell, that's how it's fundamentally supposed to work when something is is tax deductible or is a tax write-off um so why do i need to spend so much money in order to make points yes and when when one of Terran's major jobs is mm -hmm. like you know trying to go around and, and yeah. improve profitability yes. of different parts of the company yes do actions like this negatively reflect on his performance when you need to prove a point um well if it does then he should just write it off <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so the reason that we have to spend so much money when we want to prove a point is because we want to make a splash we want people to remember the point if we lost a hundred dollars to prove our point about tax write-offs if that had been a real 100 hundred dollar bill that i had destroyed nobody would have remembered that so at least but if we sold more. hypothetically 353 tax write-off shirts while we were sitting here just now That's that's only the ones that have gone through the merch message dashboard, not the ones that have sold entirely, and that's already up to 360 now. That's a point that people would remember forever. <laughs> now, our entire audience has been educated, and Luke, is there any reason that we do this other than so people can learn? Education? Yes. So we're <laughs> Consider this the investment in public education that your government won't make. Can you get a... And we're going to write it off. Can you get a charity receipt for your tax write-off? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> How many shirts now? What do we have? I'm total? curious. I'm pulling up Grand the real total. dashboard. I'm pulling up the dashboard, okay? Yeah. <laughs> tax write-off shirts. Oh, okay. That number is much lower. <laughs> We're up to about 600 so far. <laughs> yeah, because again, these are only the ones that people actually attach a merch message to. Yeah, people are working on the colored blog hoodies too. We got a, we go, yeah, we got a couple hundred of those. Uh. I'm seeing the arches championing the pack right now. Uh, the arches, the arches, we make money on. Hey, That's hey, good. if you're buying a tax write-off item, <laughs> now's a great. We'd, we'd real appreciate it. Now's a great time to to check out some of the arches, which, by the way, are not as profitable as some people seem to think they are. Oh, hey, we should probably... I'm just going to message this. I saw, some, I saw some very interesting speculation about um, our arches and our cable management arches and the pricing on them and how they're, they're probably only, you know, 15 cents of plastic and, and magnets or whatever else. And uh, I did kind of want to talk about that a little bit on the show. Um, something a lot of folks might not realize is that one of our whole things is that we kind of overbuild stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That'd be a little difficult to not realize, but I could see it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where some people just, you know, willfully don't pay attention and there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, those kinds of people are a write-off, but for everyone else... <laughs> For everyone who's willing to pay attention and willing to listen, let's talk a little bit about why our magnetic cable management arches are so expensive and why, no, you are not, in fact, going to find yeah. a cheap alternative on yeah. some other marketplace <laughs> that is exactly the same for a much lower price. So um, are you strong? Can you rip one of those magnets no. out of there for me? Um, this is a, an early prototype of our, of our extra large cable arch. How do I get my finger in there? I don't know. Eh. What like Luke's experiencing right now is the engineering work that was put into these arches to ensure that the <laughs> magnets don't come out. <laughs> It sure doesn't want to. I'll It was actually a very difficult problem And to this solve. Is a, this is a prototype one as well. Yeah. And not only did we solve that problem, ensuring that the magnets will not... 
accidentally come out of these, which is really important for safety. I genuinely think my, f yeah, I'm bending it pretty hard. Okay, I'm so my sorry to have done would, that to would you. come off before this Yeah, I, I have a pry tool. Yeah, okay. um, not only did we solve that problem, making these safer and more, and, and more durable, but... Uh, we actually did it in a way that enhances... Is your pry tool just your keys? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I have a pry tool. I was expecting like, oh, wow, they like made something for this. It's just this key. But we did it in a way that actually enhances their magnetic pull strength. Oh, cool. So uh, Jacob, who wow. was, was one of our engineers at Creator Warehouse and who did a lot of the groundwork on the magnetic cable Ooh. arches, um, <laughs> did, did a freaking like... <laughs> entire course load worth of work on magnetism and how to optimize not just the strength of the magnets but also the properties of their magnetic field so they're especially strong especially close and they're amplified in that way but as they come off that was less of a concern for him etc cetera, etc cetera. so <coughs> the uh the slug that hold the slug that holds the magnet in place is actually um Hold on a second. Let me check a, a real one real quick. Because that might have been something that we Yeah, because these, the these are like 3D printed, yeah. actually quite early at this point, uh, samples as far as my understanding goes. But we have a bin of yes. real ones here. Good, good, good. Yes. So the slug... Which looks sharp. The, the slug is made of a material that actually enhances the magnetism of the magnet. Enhance. Exactly the way that we want them to. Enhance. Okay, so... Not a write-off. This right here, I'm just going to zoom in on Linus real quick here. This right here is the magnet from the extra-large cable management arch. Um, I, I had some people talking about a how... a serious business magnet, How the these, are, these, are, these are crappy, this and what? they're not even going to last because magnets don't even last forever. It's like, these are neodymium magnets, by the way. They will last for as long as you will. Um, we've got, in each of Everything our cable management temporary. arches... Life is fleeting. Yeah. Hold the on, heat death to, of the universe is coming. I have to get this out. One sec. Ah! Entropy is inevitable. Okay. <laughs> gotta absolutely mangle these things. Okay. So we've got two of those. I'm just gonna zero this scale real quick. Oh, hold on. I'm just gonna zero this scale real quick here. Humans be squishy. I like that one too. That one's good. Okay. There we go. So I've zeroed my scale. <laughs> I'm putting my magnets on it. Um, so for the folks who think that you're just going to find this this arch, and yeah, it's expensive. I'm, I've, ne I've never denied that our products are costly, but they're costly to us, which is why they're costly to other people, not because we're just, you know, gougers and evil people. There's profit margins. We're a company. We yep. have to pay people. But we'll get to that in a second. First, uh, can you tell me um, what that reads? 28. 28 grams. So if you look up the cost of neodymium, it's about, uh, here, hold on, neodymium price. Here, we can do, we can do this together. Line us up. I like that. Price per kilogram. Here we go. I like doing things it's together. It's about $95 per kilogram, which means it's about $9.50 per 100 grams, which means you are looking at about $3 worth of magnet. Just raw magnet. Just raw neodymium material. That Would that... So how, in what way do you buy like bulk neodymium? So not only is yeah. that about $3 of raw actual material, yeah. but we customized the exact shape of our magnets in order to optimize them for our cable management arches. So that's the diameter, that's the size of the donut hole, and that's the thickness. So would you buy, would you buy that shaped from a company or did we yes. have to okay so yeah, from yeah. A, from a magnet so there's probably producer. a premium on top of the bulk price there for would be a premium that. on top of the raw materials price for anything that involves any kind of processing yeah okay so then there's logistics um something people may not realize about magnets is that they're heavy yeah you have to ship them so you have to ship them once to where they get to be integrated with your uh with your plastic arches then they get to be shipped again to our warehouse where they need to be handled and they need to be stored. Um, there's also the engineering time. There's the re there's all the work that went into making sure that our cable management holders RD. are going to freaking hold things. That's it. That I've, has to be paid for. Someone told me at some point that that's important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that 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 that, that matters. So. That makes sense. Um, and yeah, the company has to make money. We have to account for breakage. We have to account for um, you know, the potential for people to want us to process returns. You know, we have to pay customer service people. Um, basically, 
in a nutshell, if you find something that claims to be our magnetic cable management arches, but at a small fraction of the price, then what you know, because you are the kind of person who is not a write-off and who can observe things. Not and, a write-off. Yeah, and, and, is, and is open to new ideas. Uh, you will know that it is not, in fact, the same thing. It is actually a different thing. And you know what? That different thing might be fine for you. We knew that we were making an extremely premium product that was not going to make sense for everybody. We knew that. But we also knew that what we wanted was the cable management solution that I wanted to use. And unfortunately, it involves a crap ton of magnetic material. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry, they're expensive. Also fortunately, because it's really cool to use. It's a sweet system. Yeah. I'm happy they did the GIF thing. The big one is freaking ridiculous. Yeah, hey Luke, do you want to... Yeah. I mean, it really actually would be helpful because there is margin in them. We, wait, we wait, do wait. make uh, money on them. We gotta, oh, yeah, there we go. But it would be really helpful. Oh, it's if, a mess. Uh, oh, it's so clean. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's a mess. Oh, no. Oh, it's so clean. I guess now's a good time to kind of run through the whole product line. So uh, the, the big one, the one that came to me in a dream in the middle of the night was the power bar one. And man, the amount of work that went into getting the geometry and the manufacturing just right for the little like keyhole one, we had to buy dozens of power bars, power bars, uh, routers, network switches, anything with that keyhole shaped mounting thing. Uh, here, I'm just going to hop over to the store on uh, my computer for a second here. Home uh, magnetic cable management. Here we go. Linus laptop. Uh, anchor power bar keys. Yeah, basically anything with that little um, with that little uh, key shaped uh, oh, hole on the back of cool. it. I like the gifts. The gifts are good. Yeah, I'm happy we did the gifts. If I had done this one, I might have done it vertically, um, and it would involve plugging in and unplugging something into the outlet. Oh, take it off, plug it in, and put it back. Oh. Because this was a major... Oh, that's pretty sweet. This was a major product design consideration for me. Oh, dude, if it's blindly under your desk, and I could just reach and grab it, and plug something in, and just put it back? Not only that, but the magnet <laughs> is so ooh. strong that you don't ooh. have to pull it off. You can unplug oh. something from it. Unless you have the world's tightest outlet yeah. holes which you probably don't you can unplug something from it without pulling the whole thing off the wall Pretty so that sick. that was a major major design consideration for me and is one of the reasons that this one has so much bloody metal in it oh my was because we wanted the hold strength to be great enough no, that makes sense I, my use case was like i could pull it off and then look at it and like decide where i want to plug it in but i see what you're talking about this yeah. one is my personal favorite one and it's selling really well because it yeah. solves a problem that Unlike some of the other ones, there is not a current solution for. Um, no, I'm not talking like there isn't a better solution. There just isn't a current solution for it. And it's really elegant. The way that it installs stays on there. It stays on really good and then just sticks on to stuff. I absolutely love this product. Um, but then, you know, the, the dream didn't end there. The next big one was this one, the power brick holders. Yeah. Same thing. We wanted to be able to accommodate even gigantic, chonky, like laptop or dock power bricks that can do you know, 250 watts or whatever else. And then we didn't want to make it huge because we wanted to be able to accommodate much smaller ones. But this one is designed to be finally a way to keep your stupid power bricks organized in a way that is not horrible. Um, I don't want to see another power brick on the floor in our office basically anymore. So we show Can it. you show us how this works? Because someone was in one of the product photos. Yeah. It shows that uh, where the strap goes looks like it's a very small, a very small little hole. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to show how. Okay, do I have any uh, zip uh, cable ties? I, yeah. oh, I don't wait, I know. Do. I have, I have, I have, I have. Okay, yeah, okay. here. So yeah. I can show you guys how this works. Um, Oh, so are these cable ties specific to this thing? Nope. Yeah, they're longer. Oh. These go with a different thing. Don't worry about it. Got it. Okay. So basically, we've got... Uh, uh, hmm. Do I have any... Oh, yeah. There you go. You can kind of oh, see it. So there's kind of like a yeah. keyhole-shaped thing. So it cool. has it has overhangs. Yeah. Which I, you know, I see how it works now. In mold design are a little <laughs> tricky, but hey, we got good engineers. Um, so what you do is you take the cable tie hole, 
And That's yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit of a pain the first time yeah, but in particular, but you make sure whatever. it gets under that spot there. You kind of want it to be because then it's going to be, you know, it's going to be snug. And then it's on there. Yeah. Right. Yep. So then you put your thing, you know, whatever it is. Note nine. You wrap it around. Nice. Eh. And you get it on there. Then you do the other one and it's ready to go. Sweet. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Because some people were looking at the, the little hole and thinking like, is this for zap straps, not cable ties? But no, it's just, it's on the other side. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. I promise you, whatever you see about them, way more thought was put into it than should no, to, be. Well, that's yeah. why I wanted you to, yeah. to show me. Because I was like, I'm sure there's, there's something going on. I just, I didn't know. Um, so yeah, Linus laptop. So this one I absolutely love. And then the cable tie holders, actually, I think these are the top seller so far. Mm, no, no, they're not. No, they're not. These are moving these really well as well though. Um, but what's cool about these ones is we realized, okay, yeah, arches are cool, but you don't always have a ton of room. So these run parallel to the cables. Oh. So they hide really nice. Um, they're, even think about that. They're less convenient, no, they're right? Because you're still essentially using cable ties, right? Mm -hmm. But you're using cable ties that can be anchored and can be really, really um, stealthily run. And you can kind of put a cable tie anywhere now. Well, yeah. And like one of the issues with cable ties is you'll have like sag in the route yes. or whatever, or it has to go around something that often yep. can't happen, yada, yada, yada. So you can keep it nice and... So the geometry here shriek. is cool because we've got a really nice high profile run under here. It looks so like a sci-fi bridge. So if you have a very small cable bundle or a longer cable tie, you just wrap more times and there'll still be mm. enough clearance uh, for the uh, for the magnets to grab. Yeah. So this one's great. And then of course, the, I think the arches are the, are the top seller. The bread and butter. The bread and butter. <laughs> the meat and potatoes. And then the big one is cray cray if you want to see these that things in action really well um the there's a there's a clip from the building the 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 LAN gaming machines at my house where i cable manage the back of my server rack my whole setup at home has been waiting for this and i've got freaking like actually. bundles of wires that like <clears throat> Like taking the big one and like getting it down on the one side and like stuffing them in there, like, and then it's just there's some it, uh, it grabs, dude. It I'm not going to call out the brand too much, but there's some funky cables in the server room over at the lab, and these Mondo arches kind of saved the cable management of those cables because they were they were very big and uh, kind of unwieldy, and there's nothing we could really do with them. And then we were just like, what if we just magged them all to the wall? And it was like, yeah, okay, that worked. You could, like, we couldn't really tie them down very well. Like, there was a lot of issues, and then we are just like, yep. <laughs> we can force it. It'll be fine. So basically, yeah. Really exciting launch. It's going really Mention well, the by the way. the power bar is keyed quarter 20th thread for hackability. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, okay. Yes, yes, yes. How? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You madman. What are you talking about? I can't believe you did that. That's sick. Do I have one For, of these? But, but, uh, huh? Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 10 out of 10. Good choice. I love you. Uh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. He -he. So I, I got to see it. This is beyond. Oh, what? Okay. So these are the power bar keys. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This not, makes a lot more sense. Not only is the... I thought power brick, not power bar. I was very confused. Sorry, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Not only is the geometry uh, perfect for running your... Um, uh, sorry, for going into one of your, you know, power bars or network switches or whatever else. And it really was a, a very, very significant engineering challenge to get that. I'm sorry, I don't have enough zoom, guys. One of these days, yeah. we're just going to go full QVC and we're going to have like, yeah, you know, yeah, hand, yeah. hand cam. Don't worry, Dan. No, no, Dan, Dan, don't, don't worry. Don't, for real. Um, but. As a meme one day, you should hire like a hand model for WAN show. <laughs> but what's cool. <laughs> I'm sitting that, right here. <laughs> is that. It's quarter 20 threaded down the middle of the, of the magnetic strength enhancing insert. So if you wanted to hack or something else, some other shaft into this thing and mount flipping anything you wanted with a magnet, then you could. 
like camera gear, well, especially camera gear. So it was the camera crew that was like, hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you guys make this? Yeah, because they use it for everything. Yeah. That's wild. Oh, man. It's going to be... Uh, Interesting. Would a hand model for the WAN show be a tax write-off? That's a good question. Yes. Nice. If, if we paid them, which we would have to because they'd be a person who needs to be paid. Yeah. So, yes, they'd be, they'd be a right, that'd be a tax write-off. That's good to right. know. That's good to know. So, yeah. it's It was... Man, this has been such a long time coming. Um, there's a couple of notes here that I'm supposed to read from the team. Uh, uh, available in four arch sizes. Yeah, we talked through all the different solutions. Each pack of arches or accessories comes with matching standard steel plates and screws. Okay. Had a lot of people questioning why it costs so much to upgrade to VHB when VHB is cheap. That's so great that VHB is cheap. Go buy some and put it on the standard steel plates. It'll work great. So that's why. Because we didn't want to charge everyone for VHB, which was a significant adder compared to using the more temporary adhesive and wasn't necessarily useful for everybody. Not everyone wants to put something onto their, onto their wall or onto their desk with what is essentially a permanent adhesive, about as permanent as a double-sided tape gets. It's either so, permanent or it's very likely to cause damage. So we wanted the standard loadout to have a much lighter adhesive. Nothing prevents you from putting your own adhesive on those standard plates and sticking them with whatever you want to whatever you want. And the only cost to you is a roll of VHB. Now, what we also knew is not everybody's going to want to do that. Some people are just going to be like, eh, can't be arsed. And they would rather buy VHB plates from us. That's where the VHB plates came from. And you know what? The handling costs of like sleeves of, of, of taped things yeah it adds to it adds to the price of it there's a lot of overhead in uh in the actual production of the stupid things and the packaging and the shipping and the handling so yeah it's not as cheap but hey you can buy a roll of vhb tape and it comes with the steel plates that you need so you're good to go as for the silicone grips um people were questioning what they're for yeah this is cool though okay so <laughs> for maximum magnetic holding strength along this axis okay you want the magnet directly on the metal surface anything in between you're going to compromise some of that holding strength remember i did say that the magnetic fields are optimized right 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 next to the magnets and that's true of pretty much any magnet because it's like a whatever inverse square or whatever but the point is that magnetic field strength falls away like exponentially essentially so any magnet the closer you are the better so we made the design decision very early on to not recess the magnets into the plastic whoops uh, it, it, there uh, not recess the magnets under the plastic because that would have reduced the risk of scratching but it would have hurt the hold strength which for me was the top priority as so if you're concerned about the metal thing that you're sticking these arches onto um, getting scratched by you know potentially having it shift slightly then what you want is the silicone stickers which you can put onto your server rack or put onto your desk that will sit in between the magnet and your and your nice you know not wanting to be scratched surface and yeah you lose a little bit of hold strength however what you gain and this is not the right one for this don't worry we have them in all the right sizes uh what you will gain is much better strength on the y-axis that makes sense yeah, yeah. so it won't shift Pansy. around as much and it won't scratch Slide. yeah 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 um but you lose a little bit of strength and they're very strong so that's probably okay yeah it's, it's totally fine yeah um so we have we have some bundles if you're not sure where to start the essential the home and server bundles and you can get them all at ltdstore.com slash mcm i want to eventually have um conrad and potentially others involved make a cable management configurator you know how we have the desk pad configurator there are a lot of pitfalls i know there's a lot of variations also, we're now working in 3D space, and right. you have to deal with different cables and different sizes oh of cables. Oh my god, you want people to be able cables? to put them on their desk? Yeah. I thought you just meant like a, a configurator so you can like order all the things. No. I want people to be able to design um, their desk. I think yeah, it would be sweet. Let's not put R&D into that we yet. We haven't because of exactly the reasons that you're thinking. Neat. Uh, but it would be cool. <laughs> 
If you're curious about, if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the work that went into making these a reality, we're going to have a newsletter out. So sign up for the newsletter on lttstore.com. That would be a good one. Um, and we'll have that out to you guys, hopefully in the next you know week or two. But hey, you know things take as long as they take until they're good. Uh, so here's where to sign up for the newsletter. You can also see an archive of past newsletters here if you want to learn a little bit more about the precision screwdriver, that backpack that was uh, that survived a mine, um, lasers, etc. All right. People are saying that the configurator could be a tax write-off. Oh my god, which is interesting. Maybe a path to consider. Luke, I think I've got enough tax write-off for today. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see how much. I think uh, you've got more than enough, sir. I think you have significantly more than enough. Ridiculous. Let's see how our tax write-off shirt is doing. I knew you guys would love this tax write-off shirt. Good lord, almost a thousand. Yeah, I mean it's a ten dollar t-shirt. It's a really nice t-shirt. Yeah, it's the same quality as all the other t-shirts. Yep, and in a great color. <laughs> tax write-off periwinkle and tax write-off pink. <laughs> oh, man. oh man! All right, uh, what are we supposed to do? Oh, How is we're the supposed to explain. Sold out? Oh, what? Periwinkle is sold out already. Yeah, every size. Holy crap. Um, <gasps> huh. Well, this is... Maybe. Oh, is pink sold out as well? No, pink is sold out in most sizes. This is really going to hurt our ability to medium, write off... Um, extra, extra large. Enough money. And triple extra large. Hold on a second. Wait. Yeah, there's only large and extra large left in pink. That's it. Okay, this might be a problem. Yeah, maybe it was priced too low. Just a thought. Uh, Mr. Nick Light, you you're, are, on the show. you're live on the WAN show. Hi. Um, we have a significant problem with the tax write-off shirt. Yeah. We're not able to write off any more taxes because we've run out of stock. What can we do? Uh, that seems like a, <laughs> a question that answers itself. Your write-off budget is full. <laughs> okay. You should, you should pull a ninja move and change it to $99. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm worried, Nick, I'm worried, Nick, that we won't be able to write off enough for our taxes this year. Okay, well, let me, uh, I guess, let me look into that. Okay. Uh, okay. See if anything can be done. Okay. That, I guess. All right. Can you, can you let me know in the next little bit here if there's anything else we can write off? I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Don't worry. They're buying lots of cable management. Okay, all right. Okay, we're going to work on it. Goodbye. Okay, all right. Thanks, Bye. Nick. Okay, all right. He's working on it. we got to optimize our write-offs here. Uh, in the meantime, do you want to explain to the people how merch messages work? I'm dying. That's, that's a you thing. You do that. All right, I'll explain how merch messages work. The way to interact with the show is not with Twitch bits, not with Super Chats. It's with merch messages, a tool that was built by our very own float playing team and is freaking Let's awesome. Go. Sorry? Let's go. Let's go. Basically, all you got to do is head to lttstore.com, pick up something, put it in your cart, and in your cart, you will see a box for merch messages. That message will go to producer Dan. <laughs> How are you doing, by the way? <laughs> uh, who will um, do his best uh, to forward your message to the appropriate department, reply to you, uh, throw your message up onto the screen for everybody to see. You know, if you have a shout out to your mom or to your friend's mom, if you know what I'm saying, it'll, it'll go up there. You're not even paying attention, are you? I'm um, actually trying to help Dan. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's uh, fine. That's fine. Or it will get curated for me and Luke, uh, and we will, uh, we will address your question here on the show. Sometimes for like ever. Yeah, for a very long time. Today, it's not going to go forever. <laughs> Probably not. We got to play super checks there's for the after party. There's too many of these. Yeah, there's got to be a super, super checks after party. So it's going to be, it's going to be great if you're on float plane. Yeah. Uh, we've got the archive from it last week. The last week. one was fun. People seem to like it. No, oh, people seem to be super yeah. into it. Um, yeah. I think people were surprised at how fun it was actually. Yeah, super checks is pretty awesome. A lot of the awesome. comments were like, wow, this was actually pretty fun to watch. It's like, yeah. Yeah, we, we uploaded that as an extra exclusive last yes. week. Yeah. Oh, speaking of flow plane exclusives. Yeah. Uh, okay, so hold on. Here's the here's the live stream VOD from Super Checks. Yeah, the uh, the reviews are in. 
Yeah, zero dislikes. Let's go. Super checks after party. Very popular. Um, anyway, here's a, here's some gameplay. Woo! Look at that save, dude. Oh, look well, at that. Less of a save. Well, rip. That's a goal for Linus. Yeah. Anyway, the point is... Uh, I've always read... Color this. balance is, is wrong. I need to fix that. Super checks. Lots of fun. Uh, this is great. Uh, the float plane team asked me to do a little sneak peek of this. So this, yeah, this is from... Cool. This is from the Someone upcoming... Someone on the team liked it. <laughs> this is from the... Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> the upcoming collab with the one, the only, Ludwig! So we built the PC that punishes the user. Um, it's got a variety of, uh, of servos and relays on it. Uh, it's got an integration with Minecraft, courtesy of Signal RGB. And basically, oh, cool. every time he goes in the water, and we put him on this wipeout course, every time he goes in the water, his bidets go off <laughs> and spray him. Uh, if he dies, there's a variety of effects that will hit him with everything, including these little uh, gel ball blast, this little gel ball blaster here to a fart Which, cannon. like left well oh yeah it really hurt um the point is it's going to be an absolutely awesome movie movie it's going to be an absolutely awesome okay, video Casey. and yeah thanks <clears throat> it's going to be an awesome video and we're going to have some exclusives on float plane including the sneak peek and maybe we'll maybe we'll do an uncut this time uh and again. this is why we need to fight we need to fight yeah I warned him in the, in the, uh, in the, what do you call it? Pre-show? I warned him in the pre-stream, pre-show that we have on Floatplane and also technically Twitch, uh, that we were going to fight this stream. I prepped it, but I didn't tell him why. This is the topic. Are you salty that I didn't tell you Ludwig was coming and you didn't get to hang out? So, yes, but also... I'm very sorry. It actually did not occur to me. I was very flustered that day. There's multiple other things. Oh, okay. Apparently we're fighting about a lot of things. So that's, that's one of them. Okay. Hanging out with Ludwig would be cool. But you even mentioned with the, 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 like, the entire Badminton Center screen thing. You're like, oh, I should have brought you over. What do you think would have been the most entertaining thing for me to be engaged with probably in the last multiple years that we've done? Probably oh, the, the punishment, punishment PC. PC. Yeah. I'm okay, okay, okay. Um, that looked insanely fun. It still like works, right? I don't know. Oh man, we should do like an extras thing of just like random people in the company trying to do it. Yeah, I would I love to do that. You want to try it the punishment? It looks so PC? much fun. I ha I like had work to do, but I like just sitting there watching it happen was like fantastic. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It looked so good. I promise it's you. It's been broken down. Hold on, hold on. I promise you. Tie heads down. I promise you. If, and this is actually some very bad news. Oh boy. We got some news from the city of Surrey that we may not be allowed to do LAN events at the Badminton Center. <sighs> We're gonna work with them. I'm. I. I am confident. My team is Sag because that was. This was a lot of. I know. I understand. Other people also put a lot of work in. But, I yeah. hold on. I am confident that we can. We can find a solution together. At this time, okay. I'm still confident. Okay, cool. Um, they, they have expressed a variety of concerns that I think... We can address. If, if As long as everyone is, is moving forward together in good faith, yeah. that I think we can address. Cool, okay. As long as it goes forward, as long as it goes forward, I promise you, at one of those Wayland events at least, we will resurrect the punishment PC. That's amazing. Okay, because the code is done, and that was the hard part. Yeah. Was the ESP32 based web server if and the integration happen, with Signal RGB. And you want to be involved, you need to bring a change of clothes and a towel. You, you <laughs> should bring two changes of clothes and two towels. Yeah. Uh, we, we had to redress him <laughs> multiple, multiple times. times. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. The last, the last, the last part, this is a the triple part thing. Um, I think you cheated on me. I cheated on you. Yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah. I would never play super checks with anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, the shot callers. The shot callers. It didn't technically happen, but you had intention. And I don't think Electro Boom counts because my reasoning for well, this, whole jam. if you are in a European country that does cheat kisses, you do cheat kisses. That is not cheating, even though it's kisses. And so our if you're hanging out with Electro Boom, you're going to get shocked. This is fine. Okay. Okay. This is fine. Mm -hmm. But there was a plan for shot colors and I was not involved. I see. Okay. So, so our, <clears throat> our exclusive thing mm -hmm. is BDSM. 
Is that what you're saying? That <laughs> was really close. <laughs> I think it went back into the bottle. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I see. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. I didn't really fully put that together until now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. I'm just messing around, but that, I watched, I didn't watch the whole thing. Linus, do you say to Luke, uppies? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Alrighty then. <laughs> Um, Usually the show doesn't get this unhinged until much later. I, I watched part of the exclusive footage. It's awesome. That's going to be a fantastic Well, video. Ludwig's a, a, an A-plus talent, S-tier, world-class talent. Mm -hmm. um, he is... He has the same level of get it done at any cost. I, could, I was only there for like a couple minutes, and I could tell, he which has, is just... That's cool. The guy's next level. I always respect To that. say that he was a good sport about everything that happened to him while he yeah. was here would be a gross understatement. Um, let me put it this way. At one point, he had to sit on a toilet that had a GoPro in the bowl. <laughs> Barely even phased him. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. My, um, yeah, I don't even know if I want to mention it or not. My favorite YouTube video of, of potentially all time is I've sent it to you even. I don't even send lies that many videos. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know which <laughs> one you're talking about. It's one of Ludwig's. No, nope, technically oh. not. Okay. It's one of Slime's. Yes. Slime's top 10 salty ice climber Ludwig's moments. Ludwig's in it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's like actual top tier content. Yeah. Um, Anyways. All right, cool. So anyway. Yeah, that's going to be a fantastic video. Um, yeah, absolute. Check it out. Absolute mad lad. Check out had the full a, plan exclusive. Check out the full video when it releases. Had a ton of fun with them. Uh, Dan, do you want to show us how merch messages work? Or do you want Luke to just pick a couple? Nah, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Nah. We can pick a couple. The dashboard is broken. Look at this. I can't even scroll in the dashboard. It just stops after a bit. Mine is working perfectly. <laughs> Uh, you're that. you're limited to 125 merch messages. Uh, no, no, I, I can see. I, they'll load in. It just it just breaks the. You can it, you can limit it more if you want. No, no, if you fine. want more speed. Oh yeah, yeah no, kind of got a bit more resources than that's, you guys. Do you I want guess. more load bearing no, or do you want more speed? I, I got this. I, I want Nick to call me back and tell me how we're gonna write off more taxes. I think I like Luke's idea. He's just start selling over a hundred dollars. Um. So so you know you lose money on almost all of them and then. A few random people are going to buy a pink shirt for a hundred dollars. Probably for some sell more. Reason. Yeah, you know how marketing works. Okay, uh, this is a good merch message question thing uh, on this topic. Do you see a future where LMG runs entirely on sales through LTTstore.com, making external ads a thing of the past? What could change about the company? That's a really big brain question. I think that would be oversaturation. Well, it depends what LTTstore.com is. True. Fair. Yeah. What if LTTstore.com didn't only sell yeah. LTT merch? We already don't, technically. We already don't. So we could... We already sell Jerry Rig Everything Knives. Yeah. We I already sell... sell well. We already sell... Swipe Bidets. Swipe Bidets, which might have been the reason that Ludwig was up here collabing, also just because he's a bro, but like... That might make sense why he was sitting on a toilet and why his bidets were spraying him. He was up um, here, he was up here uh, talking about his bidets and helping us out, helping us promote the product. I don't know. Good if, product. Uh, we might carry uh, PTM 7950. I was going to say, I don't know if that 100% counts, but I think it does. Oh, that counts an extra lot. Yeah, it's just, it has LTT branding on it. But. Mm, yeah, but we're very clear. We're very upfront. <laughs> this, this is, is a not honey, something we made. This is a Honeywell product. Developed by Honeywell, it's a uh, it's a very excellent phase change thermal interface material. Extremely good longevity. Extremely good. Um, extremely low thermal resistance. Um, really great product. So like, there's the very Pretty beginnings. There. There's the very beginnings of a trajectory, and I think what our big brained viewer has figured out, and if our big brained viewer was galaxy brain enough. They might also figure out that one of the things that we've done 
for example, with PTM 7950, yeah. was used our internal testing resources to make sure that that thing that's listed on lttstore.com is really good. If they were quality validated, colossal products. galaxy Mondo brain, mm -hmm. they might have identified that there is a serious enshification that's going on in online retail right now, and not just in your swipe bidet equipped toilets. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, making it really hard to find trustworthy sources for just like stuff you want to buy. Um, so, what if there was a media organization? that aspired to having a trusted store. I don't know. It'd be weird. It'd be weird. That would be very, yeah, that'd be odd. Yeah, it'd be weird. Not useful at all. I prefer Googling what the best product is and getting 17 different listicle websites and then going, oh, I'll just look up Reddit and then having the Reddit posts be hijacked by an SEO team. That's what I prefer. I prefer that experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that big brain. Realistically, LTT Store is one big tax write-off. <sighs> what if what if LTT Store <laughs> becomes TrustMeBro.com? Uh, it probably exists already, and if it didn't already exist, it's going to get bought before you can get a chance to acquire it, so it's done. It's out. <laughs> I'm wondering if it already redirects. It's no, over. it doesn't. It redirects somewhere else. Oh, well, it's gone now. Domains for sale. All right. <laughs> 25 grand, by the way, USD. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's happening. So. Never mind. I mean, it'd be a good uh, write-off. Um, okay. Um, okay. Perfection. Uh, Nick's working on something. <laughs> we don't need more stuff. Um, Sarah's, Sarah's busy, but uh, here, hold on. Oh, no. Here, can you just... Uh, Whoa! Can you go to my cam for a second here? Or no, go to your cam. Go to your cam for a second here. Uh, which one's zoom and which one's My cam. So we're generating more periwinkle ones with Sharpies? Is that the... <clears throat> You're untangled. No, no, Sarah's, at, Sarah's busy. So Nick is making a gray product photo. Oh, <laughs> That's great, Nick. I saw the gray. I saw the gray shirt mock up. That's fantastic. You've we, done a terrific job. We don't mean need more though. Oh, nice. Did you show the people? Yeah, I showed the people. I just showed the people right now. So we're gonna have some gray uh, tax write-off shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, let them know that you ran out of graphic design budget like four hours ago for this project. So that's my handiwork. Okay, good job. Good, uh, excellent work. I did like it a lot. I will say. All right, cool. And if you uh, if you find any more inventory of anything else, we've got to write we've got to write them off, Nick. Yeah, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back on that. I, I I just need to confirm. I don't want you know a bunch of people to expect they're getting a write off T-shirt and then to get a you know a write off email <coughs> uh, saying that we don't have that T-shirt. So. Sure. I mean, do you want to just put mystery color in there and then? Uh... <laughs> I mean, it is a ten dollars sure, sure, shirt. Buddy, sure. All right, cool. Yeah, that's great. All right, talk to you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> They're writing it off, Jerry. <laughs> why are we? Why are we resupplying it? Luke, Luke, resupply some tall sizes. We are making a point. We're still working on the tall sizes. Chill. <laughs> but now they're not going to be able to afford to continue development on them. No, no, no. It's, we'll write it off. They'll we'll write off yeah, the development. The, the, oh, I'm starting get, to get, get this now. Program, I'm yeah. starting to get it. Gee. All right. Oh, the, uh, the the XL in pink is sold out, so there's only larges in pink left. Yeah. And don't forget about the gray. Special that, order. Don't forget about oh, gray. Oh, gray is on the site now. It just says gray. It's not a color block. <laughs> it just says gray. No, no. Go, let's scroll down. Look, look, look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's amazing. <laughs> this is a gray t-shirt. Is Oh, that in just text is so cool. Oh my god. I actually love this. Genius. This is great. Oh. Oh man. Don't even try to message support asking oh, to change your color so shirt or, or add it to your existing order. If you, you want to get this thing, you place a new order. I'm you so sorry. Better print them like that and I want one. No, I, no, 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 no. They will not. That is a gray shirt. It will not be printed like that. You can do it yourself, though. Yeah, you could use a marker and you could do that with the pink one. The pink, pink one. one's already sold out. No, 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 no. It will be a gray shirt. 
Dan, no, Dan. <laughs> right, well, you I'm can, get the, you can get the pink and large and then modify it. You could you could do this yourself. For all sure. right, all right. This, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna so, download the so, vector from the server and Sebastian. Just make one. Sebastian said this is great. Get nice. It? Get, it. get it. All that right. Uh, Want to hit us with another merch message? Oh, sure. I, I love that that photo is on the store. That's amazing. That's good so job, good. Nick. Yeah. Hey guys, I appreciate your quality scripts. I'm curious if you did well in your school writing classes or if that skill came later. Also, when and why did you decide to hire your first staff writer? Huh. First staff writer. I mean, really, realistically, Luke was kind of supposed to be like a writer slash episode prepper from not, not at NCIX, but oh, yeah. from day zero of Linus Media Group. Yeah. And then the next one after that was John Martin. Yes. And that wasn't until right before we moved out of the Langley house. Yeah. We tried to hire like a helper benchmarker for Luke before that. Yeah, that didn't work out. It did not work out. No. Um, whether it was because we didn't know exactly what position we needed or whether we oh, didn't no, we really knew. have the uh, have the hiring practices nailed down that yet. That might have been a problem. That could have been an issue. Um, that was I think uh, that was I think the first person Luke ever fired. Yes. Um, I wasn't even in town. I think was I was the overseas. the first person to get fired from the company, and it was the first person that I fired. <laughs> and, yeah, Linus was like on vacation or something, and I had to call him and be like, yeah, so by the way, this is happening. <laughs> Which is an interesting one for sure. Um, please tell the story. I, I think we're... No, no, I mean, we did, we're not looking to identify or shame yeah, anyone. No, it just, fine. it involved falling asleep at work multiple times. Yeah. I'll say that much. And that should be all you really need to know. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, also paired with other things. That actually wasn't the only problem. No, but it was all they need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh oh. Oh crap. Um. Oh my goodness. Uh, but, uh, but, but, okay. I will deal with this later. It's fine. It's fine. Just my wife. Um. Okay. So, do you want to hit us with another merch message? With Intel's upcoming move to Arrow Lake, what do you mm. think the impact of removing hyperthreading will be for performance? Honestly, with how many cores we have in desktop processors now, I'm not convinced that there's going to be a significant impact. Um, like in, Intel, I th I think. Don't quote me on this because everything's everything's still rumors at this point. But I think the plan is to keep core counts pretty constant. If they make the kind of expected improvements um, to their efficiency cores, uh, like if those get significantly faster, honestly, I would rather use the power budget. Not to mention the the die budget, the area budget. Um, I'd rather they use it to juice up the efficiency cores and give me more multi-threaded performance that way compared to giving me a secondary thread on my performance cores that realistically is not contributing to overall system responsiveness and system performance the way that it used to. When Intel was going up against AMD, or an AMD had single core processors with no SMT, um, simultaneous multi-threading, hyper-threading, um, the difference, like as an AMD fanboy who... Like, kind of willfully, it was like, la, 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 at the time, okay? I, I hadn't figured out how stupid fanboyism was yet. I was legitimately kind of upset when I got my first Intel that era system. Um, and it was like just a screw around with system. It was like an older P4 Northwood that I was like, oh, I'm going to overclock this knot out of this thing. It'll be kind of funny. I'll hit like a super high frequency. But I was rocking Athlon 64 at the time. Athlon 64 was so sick. And I got this thing running. I went, holy shit. Hyperthreading is night and day. Yeah. In Windows XP, when we only had one core, the difference in responsiveness it was, wild. was noticeable. And I was like, oh, man. And that was one of the things that made me so certain that dual core was something that I needed in my life. Because if that's what just a little bit of extra efficiency on my one core is going to do for me, man... Two cores? Let's go. But we're at a point now where it's not like that anymore. Every processor for sale today, pretty much, has more than one processing core. And so you're not getting that, that night and day difference. Yeah. You're getting a marginal difference in certain <clears throat> workloads, and it's coming at a cost of complexity and power. Um, 
I'm honestly a little surprised that AMD chased them to SMT. And as far as I know, AMD doesn't have any plans to get rid of it. But not every implementation is built equal, and AMD is certainly not as uh, constrained in their power budgets these days as Intel is. So the only answer that I can give that I am certain about is that we will see. And that I'm excited to see how it turns out. <laughs> Nick, just live editing the store is like one of my favorite things now. Oh my god. It's just mystery and then a bunch of question marks and then the, the picture for it. <laughs> oh man. This is so good. The hilarious thing is like t-shirts are not even something that are problematic. Like we don't, as you can tell, we only had like yeah. a few hundred of these shirts. So yeah. like whatever. There was really no point, especially <laughs> once you started adding gray. There's just no way. Luke, there, it's a write-off, though. Luke, it's a write-off. If Nick can think of... if Nick's It was watching, so funny until there was actually financial consequences, and then it was so not funny for me anymore. If Nick's watching right now, if there's anything else you want to write off that's no, not a t-shirt, no. you just let me know. It's, just let me know. Let me know. Maybe, maybe, maybe just one day. One day. Oh my god, these hoodies, though. Short circuit color blocks sold out. TechLink color blocks sold out. LTT color blocks sold yeah, out. Yeah, I wonder why. Well, I just I don't know. I thought we had I thought we had more of these. The TechWiki it's one's a still for sale. Fifteen dollar hoodie. Well, yeah, it's a great hoodie. It's a quality hoodie, Luke. <sighs> we gave one to Ludwig, and he was like, "This is a nice hoodie." Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a quality it's hoodie. It's a nice hoodie. Yeah, if you can, uh, by, by all. Well, Nick, if if you can find any more hoodies, uh, make sure that they're sufficiently written off. Let's get them written off because the the VOD people they're not going to get anything. They're going to yeah. get no write offs. Well, Luke, watch live. Okay, uh, let's do another topic. What do you want to talk you about? You live in like Europe or something? Just wake up at like four in the morning. Yeah, exactly. And watch the WAN show. Ruin exactly. your sleep schedule. Oh, we need to get sponsors done. Wake up for like a four hour block in the middle of your night and then go okay, back Luke, to sleep. Okay, Luke. How about this? Mm -hmm. Let's make some money. The show okay. is brought to you today by Ridge. We're doing it. Are you struggling to pull out this big thing from your pants? It's thick and heavy, not to mention the skin is all wrinkled. Oh. It's not visually appealing. We know that for sure. Well, our sponsor, Ridge, is here to change all of that. You're going to go from floppy to hard with their minimalistic wallet. It's built to last. Everyone wants that. And I know what you're thinking. Ridge is full of surprises. They have their 11th anniversary sale event happening right now. You can get up to 30% off all their wallets and everyday carry gear with over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including their new wooden and leather wallets. Ridge will have a design just for you. Their wallets hold up to 12 cards and can hold cash with an attachable clip or band. And the team over at the Ridge is so confident you'll love their product. They offer a 45 day test drive period. If you're unsatisfied, just send the wallet back and you'll get a full refund. Check out Ridge's 11th anniversary sale and get free shipping using the link down below. Ooh, 20% off rings. The show is also brought to you by Squarespace. How confident are you with your design <laughs> skills? <laughs> what? Because when it comes to building a website, it's no joke. <laughs> Please leave your finger paints at home. Square, I mean, we should have had Nick in there. Uh, Squarespace. <laughs> Squarespace is here to help save you from a disaster of your own making. It's an all-in-one platform with a variety of customizable themes and templates for websites. And with their award-winning designer templates, you can now show off to your whole family and all your friends. I mean, look, I built this. Oh, my God, mine. Uh, okay. What? Where's that picture of me from? Whether you're a local business, a blogger, or an artist, Squarespace has you covered. All the templates seamlessly work on mobile devices as well. And Squarespace has all kinds of tools. They offer marketing features, including SEO support, email campaigns, and social tools. Plus, with 24-7 support, someone will always be there to answer your questions. So don't wait. Head to squarespace.com slash when, and you can get 10% off today. Finally, the show is brought to you by Vessi. The weather can be miserable this time of year, but your feet don't have to be. Vessi shoes are here to make your feet dry like mummies while you look like daddies. What the? <laughs> 
They claim their shoes are very, very waterproof and that you can walk into as many puddles as you would like or kick down snowmen with their grippy Alta high top. The best thing is that it's not made with rubber like these generic rain boots. They're light and breathable and super easy to put on. Also, all their products are vegan and cruelty free. With their 365-day warranty and over 10,000 reviews, don't let the rain stop you from moving. Check out Vessi. They offer all kinds of shoes for different occasions, so you can always find something to fit your routine. Now, you can get 15% off your purchase with code WANSHOW at Vessi.com slash WANSHOW. We'll also have that linked down below. All right. Do some more merch messages. Is that what's next? Not topics? We can do some topics if you want. Yeah, I think we should. Oh my God, the merch message per minute counter is way back up again. Let's uh, let's do this. We're getting a merch message every four seconds right now. <laughs> it's a little faster than that sometimes. Uh, can we do some merch messages so uh, sure, I don't have yeah. to do this again for an hour? <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm, I'm unprepared for the thing that I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, brain, where are you? Um, hello, boys. Luke, I've so, uh, got to know, what are the origins of the buy at the end of the show? I know Krista on Level 1 Text does it as well. Did uh, one of you start it? Does it predate you both? I have a feeling this is one of those situations, you know when like certain technologies get simultaneously invented? Algebra. Yeah. Or is it like calculus? calculus? I feel like this is like one calculus. of those. I think we're just both awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where... Almost, like... almost nothing you see on the internet is original. Yeah, like I, I had a, I had a bunch of people. It's literally the word "buy." Like I had a bunch of people speculating that I wore that, um, that brown coat. Yeah, because in, of like because some... of technology connections. Yeah, and it's like, like you know what? I love technology connections. Great channel. He's super cool from yeah. what I can tell. Uh, we've only corresponded by email like once, and I don't know. I don't, I don't know a ton about him, but I know his content's great. But no, I've had that jacket for almost 10 years. The first time I wore it, um, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't find it. I went looking for it. That's why I sent you that weird, um, that weird picture of you as Funk Man. We used to do these yeah. commercials for the gaming brand <laughs> Funk. And um, at some point, was it for a Funk video that I wore the suit? Yeah, I think it was one of the mouse ones. I, that's what I thought too, but I couldn't find it. I didn't, I didn't realize he wore... Oh, he does have that jacket. Okay. Yeah, it, it seems to be basically exactly the same jacket. Um, but the first time I wore it was like... Almost, it was somewhere between 9 and 10 years ago. I got it at Value Village for like $8 because I needed sort of a, a, a salesman-looking jacket, but I'm kind of down on my luck. Um, and it was sort of based on the Simpsons character Gil. And it's like, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm not in a, it's, it's not like a, a, a competition for who thought of it first because neither of us thought of it first. Yeah. The idea of wearing a costume of wearing a jacket that sort of says professor who doesn't spend any money on clothing is not one that either of us invented. It's just, it's just a thing that. We have both done on occasion. Um, love his channel, and any resemblance, I guess, is a happy accident. But yeah, yeah. no, it's definitely an, definitely an accident. I'm trying to find it right now. I, uh, I've so far been unsuccessful, but yeah, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to find it. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure how extensively you looked. I, I looked. Okay. I'm not even bothered then. Hmm. Here we go. This is the video that I sent Luke, though. Um, I, th I think this is the one. Oh, my God. Stop. So this is a behind the scenes of the production. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is not the one you sent me. It's oh. A different one. It's KB4. I thought the KB460 was the one that had... Uh, the one you sent me, we were at my <laughs> parents' place. <laughs> i didn't remember this i just remembered my like uh, pretending to, that my hand was burning on the mouse i didn't remember being in it no that was a, this is for a keyboard luke oh right yeah so i i couldn't remember a ton of this stuff dude <laughs> what when was this <laughs> Anyway, um, so I came across oh, a bunch man. of the old funk stuff 
when I was looking for this. Uh, oh, hey, here's, oh, hey, yeah. here's the actual um, ad. Someone uh, re-uploaded it. Uh, so here, hold on. Where's Angry Luke at? It had kind of... Oh, wait, oh, here it is! Hey! Yeah, so this was shot nine years ago. Yeah. And that's the first appearance of of the jacket. Am I picking my nose? And smearing it on the window. Uh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> I, uh, I don't remember any of the context for for that oh i was pitching a campaign yeah i think it's like different varieties of like features that the product could have or something <laughs> anyway um yeah sweet we've done some weird stuff over the years sure man. have we've done some really weird shit over the years <laughs> when you sent me me dressed as funk man all of that came back real quick. Yeah, why we went in the pool, didn't we? I don't remember why, but you did like a you did like a coming out of yeah. the pool, and then like the glue that we used to glue all the fake <laughs> chest hair onto you off. like started coming off. It's a whole thing. <laughs> oh, man. I think we got one shot at that shot. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, this is a teaser for an upcoming <gasps> video. Um, Jake is working on an AI tool for processing our entire back catalog of footage yeah, yeah. into its searchable database. Yeah, yeah. So you can be like Luke holding a keyboard and it'll bring up every clip of Luke holding a keyboard. This is crazy cool. There are tools for this out there already. I know. No, no, we, we, okay. like, like that, oh, we have a video like coming. messing with one. He's not yeah. making one. No. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, we, we have a video coming. Uh, it's, oh, so cool and combined with the ultra fast storage video do you feel like incredibly vindicated now for keeping everything yeah no no even now we're not gonna use it like most of the time yeah but if we're ever looking for alex in a workshop well yeah but it narrows it down a lot <laughs> compared Fair. to mvi underscore zero zero seven eight dot what totally like, yeah. yeah it's it's a totally totally different ball game very excited. No, we're not going to upload every video clip to Google Photos. That's not how that works. Oh my I'd, goodness. I'd have to buy petabytes of storage on Google Photos. Um, Redonkulous. Um, okay. Okay, he's adding more. He found some more pink and periwinkle, and he's adding some more crazy shit. We're going to write it off. Don't even think about asking to have an order edited because everything will be gone before you even get a chance. Just if you want an order for any of this stuff, get it in there. Um, <laughs> oh man, Why? it's the write off sale, dude. <laughs> Why? It's the write off sale. Um, okay, another merch message, a new topic. I'm kind of thinking about making this an annual event, it's around tax time. Around tax time. The pre-tax time write-off event. Why wouldn't you do post-tax time? Because then people get their, their tax returns. Because I, I'm concerned about my tax returns. i got to write it us, off. Luke. Yeah, it's not about them. <sighs> yeah. I've got stuff to write off. Okay. Um, what's, the, what's the next topic? How do I get out of here? <laughs> How do I get us to write off less things? The door's over there. <laughs> yeah, Dan said we need merch messages. So. I just can do whatever. I need a break. Card, technically, the card says merch messages. <laughs> All right. Now it says two to three topics. Just move on, Luke. <laughs> get over it. Okay. Uh, Airbnb bans snooping. Airbnb will be banning indoor security cameras and other recording devices from rental listings beginning April 30th. They will also now require hosts to disclose the presence of decibel monitors. Yeah. So many hosts have policies for their Airbnbs that you can't have a party or you can't have too many people over. So you can set up a decibel monitor to notify you if the noise level goes above a certain amount or if they're going real hard. Yeah. Like there could be a variety of things <laughs> that could, or, or if they have a pet, so a barking dog would trigger it as well. Right. So there's a variety of reasons that hosts might include decibel meters in their suites. Anyway, carry okay. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, Airbnb's previous policy was to merely limit the use of cameras to common areas and require that they are not uh, require that they are not hidden. Uh, but it didn't require that the host disclose their location or whether or not they were inside or outside. There was likewise an ambiguity over spaces that weren't bedrooms, but nonetheless certain uh, nonetheless sorry contain a couch or futon sufficient for sleeping. This ambiguity mm. has led to problems like cameras being placed inappropriately close to the entrance of bathrooms uh, airbnb likewise has a spotty track record of responding to complaints about surveillance as exemplified by a 2019 report of a family finding a hidden camera disguised as a smoke detector where the host was initially exonerated then later banned and the family refunded i'm pretty sure that was after they like blew it up on Twitter or something. Yeah. Um, it would just, I don't believe this happened naturally. Discussion question is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow and the footage from surveillance cameras inside of his rental property. No, it's obviously BS. Honestly. Well, I mean, for me, I just don't feel like this, um, is going to do anything. No, because if the, people really wanted like the the like dirty cameras, they were trying to hide them anyways. Yeah, um, and so I just yeah. don't really, I don't really understand the point of of this policy change. I mean, I yeah, I guess I think having so a that policy, they, yeah, they can ban people more easily. But I think it's, I think it's more about plausible deniability for also Airbnb, yeah. and covering their own legal liability than it is about actually protecting the but users. They should because do that. the hidden cameras are the users. Like what I want to know, <laughs> I see is. What is what what is what is the enforcement of this look like? Because hidden <laughs> cameras are already banned. But as far as I can tell, it's the hidden cameras that, that are the actual are problem. The actual yeah, problem. You, you sold me on this. I was like, no, this this makes sense. This will help somewhat. And yeah, no, not at all. Because people that were doing this nefariously were already hiding it, um, and that was already against the rules. So this is like this is like banning the appropriate that's not even appropriate banning the not really that bad but still bad part of something but leaving the really bad part of it just fine because it was already banned and people were already circumventing well, it's one it. of those things it's like uh, it's a really bad analogy but i'm sure there's a good analogy out there the point the point is just that um you're you're not really you're not really keeping the the ne'er-do-wells yeah. from continuing to do what they were doing yeah um People and are going to break the law anyways. Honestly, unless Airbnb is doing any actual auditing on their operators, I don't see how they're going to affect any kind of meaningful change. There's no way they're going to. At, at the, uh, there's, there's no way. They could have a system where they have like a small team of people that like randomly checks in on Airbnbs, but there's no way they could do all of them. And here's a problem for me, is that if I was an Airbnb operator, which I'm not, I feel like this could push me underground because there is no possible way that I would have a property, particularly one that I'm not living at. Like if I had a, like if I had a, let's say for example, I had a vacation property that I didn't live at full time and I Airbnb'd 11 months out of the year and I used occasionally. I don't, but let's say that I did. What? I'm not going to have functionally any surveillance cameras even in the very common areas so i'm not going to have any record if say for example uh, a fire was started in the kitchen oh yeah Th this is like so can i play like kind of devil's advocate here a little bit and kind of go okay so then what is my recourse well now because there's absolutely no way that i'm not going to have at least a camera in a kitchen if I, if I was an operator, which I'm not, because partly because I'd be paranoid about this kind of thing. This, this, I, I think your reasoning there is fair and good, but I think the ultimate answer is that the golden days of Airbnb is like over and people should just go back to cheap hotels. Okay, you skipped ahead in our conversation oh, a little bit. I, sorry. I wanted to play devil's advocate for a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah, but I think I think it's fair. I mean, yeah, if you don't live there, if there's no other way to observe, because like at a hotel. Yeah, you don't have cameras inside the rooms, but you have cameras in the hallways. Yep, in the and, common areas. And the, and the common areas. And you have hotel staff that are working there. So you have yes. some amount of There's attendance. a level of expectation that somebody is on hand to deal with a problem. But if, yeah. if nobody is on hand to deal with a problem, Kevin S. in Floatplane says, isn't that what's insurance for? Yeah, but do you know how much lower your insurance premiums are if you have cameras? 
if you and do you have any idea what how much easier that conversation is going to go with your insurance provider if you have photographic proof of what happened absolutely so no the, yeah the yes insurance is exactly why i would want to make sure that i have cameras in in particular zones do you need there's a, some do you need a camera mounted to the bottom of your hot tub at a 45 degree angle toward the seat hmm. no obviously not is that a thing that's happened i don't know a pro- i mean you name it some perv has yeah, put a camera in it probably yeah. uh, but the point that i'm trying to make is that there are legitimate places where if i was an airbnb operator i'd be looking at this going okay well, now I'm not allowed to do this, so I'm just going to do it sneakier. Um, and, you yeah. know, man, I, I think about the tech savviness of the average person. And for every <clears throat> Airbnb owner with a hidden camera who gets busted by a really savvy uh, renter, there's got to be a hundred or a thousand yeah. that don't. There was one interesting idea. Uh, someone said, bring a travel router and unplug theirs. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. That's a pretty decent idea, to be honest. That's, like, pretty solid, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know where the message went, so sorry. I can't quote your name. Yeah, this is another thing. One. Nova Frost says the hidden cameras are mostly nefarious actors installing them without the owner knowing about them. I think that that's probably a lot of it, but I also think that that's a lot of excuses. It's a very good excuse. And, I mean, here's another thing. Like, I would definitely want a camera pointed at my internet setup. I've got a camera pointed at my rack right now. You do, technically. I, of course I do. Yeah. I have at least three cameras pointed yeah. at racks that belong to me right now. Yeah. Because... E- and ones that don't. Even if all you want to know is, are the activity LEDs on that working? Like, if your internet's up, but something else is wrong, like, there's... Are the fans spinning on that server? Is that server on or not? Like, there's a, there's a, a hundred reasons that you would want a camera pointed at your rack. Yeah. Um... Like, say, you're a Twitch streamer, for example. Uh, sorry. Um, anyway, the point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that um, I would consider it to be unacceptable for me to, not, for me to not be able to monitor if someone is messing with the networking in the Airbnb and potentially endangering future guests. So it's like, okay, well, what's the, what's the middle ground here? I'll just Hotels. not. I'll just not Airbnb my house. It, yes, thank you. We know you got to the. Uh, we know you got the answer loop. God, hostels are fun and super cheap. I've stayed at a hostel for thirty bucks, and it was cool. Met some cool people. Often get really good suggestions of like places to go, places to eat, things to go see. I understand that. If you don't want to do that, I understand that Nick has found some more things to write off. Oh no. Uh, what are we? What are we looking at here? <clears throat> okay, so the tax write-off shirt. Um, oh, okay. Oh, it's actually not clear that that's a, that that's an option, but okay, sure. Whatever. Mystery. Okay. So a periwinkle and pink. Oh man. Did he bring them back and are they already gone again? Okay. Probably. Well, there's some gray. My goodness. Uh, there's still, there's still some gray and, uh, mystery definitely exists. And then what, what else is going on here? Uh, oh my God. He's adding more things. What do you uh, add? What do you add? Okay, things are it? things are getting a little bit crazy. I'm not sure. Where do I find all the tax you write-off know what? I items? I give up. Let's burn it down faster. What uh, is it? Oh, here we go. What's on sale? Okay, uh, tax write-off shirt. Oh, okay. Okay, so here's everything in the oh, tax write-off wow. sale. Uh, That's a thing you can do? What? Like, view all of the crazy discounts? I guess so. Uh, okay. Oh, he says, hold on. He says, hold on, hold on in all caps. There's an extra I in there. Okay. Uh, let's do another topic then, shall we? Sure. Yeah. Hold on, hold on to yourself. Uh, this is gonna hurt like, sorry. Uh, It's a fairly quick topic. EU AI regulations. The European Parliament has voted to adopt the EU AI Act. This is crazy. Like the unit count keeps going up like wild, but the revenue doesn't go up. (laughs) And the profit goes down. Good, good. This is good. Okay. Yeah. We needed to offset any gain that the company might have from the magnets. Or like, it would have gone to our heads. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Trying to carry keep on. ourselves leveled. Um, the e- e- yeah. Anyways, European Parliament they voted to adopt the EU AI Act, which bans AI-enabled social scoring, exploitative behavior engineering, and emotion recognition systems at work 
or school and limits law enforcement's use of biometrics except in exhaustively listed and narrowly defined situations. Not sure what exhaustively listed means. Exhaustively listed means <laughs> that the list is all-inclusive. So it, it, it includes every allowed scenario so that there's no ambiguity in the interpretation of when it's allowed. Uh, I understand. Okay, okay. Uh, the act also includes stricter scrutiny and transparency requirements based on the potential risk of an AI system. Some have criticized the act as for going too far and placing European AI firms at a disadvantage in terms of development and raising capital. It will be some time before the new law does take effect, with its new provisions rolling out in phases over the course of the next two years. Yeah, personally, I'm not super worried about the poor companies not being able to raise capital so that they can make exploitative behavioral engineering systems. But <laughs> um, AI-enabled social scoring. Oh, my God. All of these things are, like, horrible. Yeah. Uh, emotion recognition systems at work or school. Meanwhile, in America, you've got cars rating your driving patterns and probably using machine yeah. learning models to determine what your insurance, like in order to determine, um, you know, or it would be the insurance companies that are probably using some kind of machine learning to take that massive amount of data and distill it down into how much your premium should be. America has got some stuff to figure out. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, look, I, I, I always feel like I have to do this where anytime I'm calling out, you know, the problems oh, dude, that exist in America. So many of like, our own yes, problems. We have we have lots Woo! of our own problems. We're we're we got problems, okay? We're we're problem we're problem bros. I've been sick for a month to get an appointment with my family doctor. It takes longer than a month. And when I went to the clinic, uh, I had a maximum of five minutes I was able to see the doctor for. Okay, your so doctor sucks. My answer was uh, I don't know, something viral, and then they kicked me out. Yeah, your doctor blows chunks. Canada! In case you're wondering. Yeah. Mine's actually really good, There's, but it, it can be hard to find one, especially here in Vancouver. What do you mean by Vancouver. really good? Like, you can see them quickly? Uh, if we really need to, we can see them in a pretty reasonable see, amount of time. but that's the problem. All my symptoms have been mostly pretty mild. Yes. So the it, really need to is not there. It would be so a few, it takes over a month. It would be a few weeks, but there's absolutely no way that she would like kick me out after five minutes or whatever. No, no, no. That's the walk-in clinic. Oh, the, the walk-in clinics are terrible. Yeah. My family doctor oh. doesn't kick you out right okay, away. Yeah, I it just takes bother. forever. Unless you have very serious symptoms yeah. going on, it takes forever to no, be able to No, walk-in clinics. Forget it. Yeah. It's, I, if I need to be seen quickly. I just didn't, if, if I'm sick for multiple weeks, I don't want to like... If I'm talking to you and other people about yes. like why I'm still sick, I don't want to be like, yeah, and I haven't gone to see anyone. Yeah. So I went to the 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 walk-in clinic is like more of a formality than anything. I kind of knew there was going to be nothing yeah. good coming from that, unless I can tell them what's wrong with me. It's basically useless. If I'm like, hey, I have this, I need this thing, and they're like, uh, yeah, it seems about right. Here you go. They'll like write me a thing. Yeah, just just take some ivermectin and then you're good to go. Nice. No more worms. Yeah, drink some bleach. <laughs> no more worms. Do not do either of those things. <laughs> I mean, if, if I did drink bleach, I don't think I would be sick anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have a condition of some, some sort. Problem solved. <laughs> not medical advice. He's come, he's come up with uh, an acute case of rigor mortis. <laughs> 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 I'm not sad. Uh, I'm gonna type. I'm gonna type that. Yeah, I know. Out. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 localized below the waist. We get it. <laughs> All right, he got it. Oh man, I don't even have to tell jokes anymore. <laughs> Just laugh hard enough, and Linus knows what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well. Uh, anyways, um, next topic. Weird notebook check article about our video? Yeah, this is super weird. Hey. Um, the original version of it uh, credited this photo to PlayStation, which I thought was really interesting. Oh, yeah, no, I did see this. So they've made at least one change to it. Um, everything about this is super weird. Well-known tech YouTuber declares PS5 dead, wants to provide proof by building his own PC for the same price, and fails all along the line. So this appears to be in reference to our It's Time to Kill the PlayStation 5 video, where we made a, um, like a, a second-hand crack 
at taking a PS5 budget and trying to build a PC that is competitive yeah. and ultimately came to the conclusion that the PS5 Xbox Series X generation, for a variety of reasons, have held on to their better value than an equivalently priced PC title much longer than expected and longer than previous generations, and that if you wanted to buy with brand new hardware you are still better off buying a PS5 than you are today. However, if you're willing to dive into the secondhand market and put something together yourself, you can get competitive. Can it, it is possible today, but you'll have to be a little bit patient and try to find a deal. So, the writer took all of that and came away with... Um, that it requires compromises that hardly any gamer would make. I guess they've never been to a LAN party because... Yeah, I, I, okay, so I had not watched the video. Sure. But I did skim this, and I found that line and was like, huh. So I went and looked at the parts list and genuinely stared at it for a while being like, what if this would I not do? <laughs> like, I, this all seems quite reasonable. I don't understand. The number of trash tier inherited cases that I have Dude. seen at LAN parties. Yeah. Outnumbers the nice brand new ones. There guys. was an Please era where there would be, be real. custom systems in old Dell and HP cases at every single land. That would be like a quarter of the system. Of course, it was absolutely a thing. Of course, there were. Uh, there's no question <clears throat> the gaming PC offers more possibilities. TechTube wanted to prove the opposite and embarked on an ambitious experiment. He put together a gaming PC that would offer better performance than the PS5 at a comparable price. However. A number of difficulties arose that the YouTuber had apparently not considered. The project can therefore be considered a failure. I'm going to reference you as the YouTuber from now on. Thank you. I love that. That's so good. Here's the thing, <laughs> writer of this article. By the time we've uploaded the video, we know the outcome. <laughs> this may surprise you. <laughs> That's nuts. But there is a period after when we have conceived of an idea and filmed the video, where the video is filmed and all the information is known and it is being edited before it is uploaded. The project is exactly what we set out to do, which was to look at what it would take to build a PC for the budget of a PlayStation 5. So um, the project was a success because we built a PC that was fairly equivalent to the PlayStation 5 in raw performance, but did have compromises, which we met head on, acknowledging in the video even things that most people probably wouldn't be aware of. Did you know, for example, that HDR on Intel Arc is a mess? No. It's because they used the standard DirectX 12 implementation, which many game developers don't use. Instead, they use AMD and NVIDIA's own proprietary flags because they predate the standard implementation. So you'll be playing a game on AMD or NVIDIA hardware in HDR, and HDR will work, and you'll play that same game on Intel, and it will be all washed out, you know? Like, it'll have that yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. log footage look. Yeah. Um, like, it's not graded. Um, and that's, that's a known issue. It wasn't one that I knew about before this project, but that's, that's part of the journey of discovery of doing things like this, is, is you learn. It's, it's a learning outcome. Uh, was initially able to obtain all components at a price comparable to the purchase price of the PS5. However, this was only possible because the YouTuber decided to buy used hardware without a warranty. Oh, no. The total price is not really realistic. Yes, it is. Um, this was all stuff we found. Uh, Linus received the case free of charge due to signs thing, of yeah. use. Signs of use. I love him describing this case as having signs of use. The thing was trashed. Um, and getting a case for nothing is a thing. You can do it. Absolutely. You just have to be patient and you have to be willing to use one that's kind of trashed. Yeah. Um, additional costs would have to be planned for this. No, they wouldn't. Um, the shipping costs for the individual components are also not included. And this is true, but a lot of the parts that we found, in fact, we found better deals that we didn't include because we were worried that they wouldn't be reproducible. Uh, David found a way better CPU for the same price, for example, on Facebook Marketplace, which he could have gone and gotten. And yes, there are some, you know, transit costs that you would maybe have to account to there. But no, these are actually things that you could obtain. 
It is true that we didn't account for the cost of the operating system and peripherals. That is accurate, but you can use Windows without paying for it, even if you shouldn't. Um, and we acknowledged that we didn't include the cost of peripherals. We also didn't include the additional cost of buying games on the PlayStation Store. Games on PlayStation are more expensive, by and large, than if buying them on PC. If you wanted to play a multiplayer game, wouldn't you have to buy the PS Plus thing or whatever it's called as well? Um, I'm not sure how it works these days. I haven't, I haven't daily driven I don't PlayStation know. basically no in forever. So, or basically forever. Um, <clears throat> the newest PlayStation I own is a PS PS2. That should give you some idea. Hey, me too. Um, buying new hardware nice. would cost over a thousand dollars. This is true, but it wasn't what we were talking about. Uh, wait, if you want to rebuild the PC, sorry, hold on a second. If you want to rebuild the PC, you have to plan for significantly higher costs. If rebuild you want to it? rebuild it. Okay, I'm I'm really not sure what that uh, means. Maybe they mean, like, build the one that you spec'd out. The advantage of gaming consoles is that they uh, are ready to use straight out of the box. Yes, 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 yes. Um... It is therefore unlikely many gamers would follow the YouTuber's example and build their own PC from used hardware instead of buying a PlayStation 5. You're right. And that's exactly our point with exercises like this and with Scrapyard Wars is that they should. Um, In one of the Scrapyard Wars, I made my own. There's benefits, guys. There's benefits to learning. That's like saying... A lot of people are saying it's AI-generated article. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't actually think it was either. There, there's... there's this <coughs> This article feels a little bit like saying um, that we should have made a video about hiring a plumber to come and repair our sink instead of, you know, going to, um, to a, a building materials refurbisher and buying a used sink and installing it ourselves and learning something and saving some money. The f*** are you talking about? Like, are you, are you even, are you... Is that an interesting video? Is that, is that good life advice? <laughs> Honestly, though. Yeah, fair enough. Is that what we should be promoting? <laughs> Just have someone build it for you. Don't do anything yourself. Don't learn. <laughs> Pay as much as you can. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get it. We, we never at any point in the video were, were dishonest in any way. By the way, about I'm, just, I'm just going through... Our uh, success or lack thereof, however you want to define that. Online listicles and finding free computer cases right now. I know. I've, I've found a few already. Not listicles, listings. What is listicles? A listicle is an article that's a list. Oh, right. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, anyway, so there's, I have some notes from, from Jessica here. Uh, wait, Really? What's up? Oh, uh, Jessica says, I have read the article in German, and it is basically the same in both languages. Also, I am fairly certain the author is not an AI. I didn't know Jessica uh, was... I didn't know she could read German. Okay. Me neither. Cool, though. He posts around four relatively short articles every day to Notebook Check, usually two articles in German, plus their English translations. I believe this to be non-suspicious. Yeah, that's fair. Um... She also said, odd factors from the article. The article provides a summary that misunderstands the purpose of the video and dismisses the project as a failure, essentially because we chose to buy used hardware without a warranty. It is also extremely dismissive of trying to build your own PC simply because a lot of gamers won't want to spend a lot of time on it or don't have the skill and will choose to do something else instead. Well, I've Which is fair enough. got a few words for the writer of that article, <coughs> and they are... Maybe you should get good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> uh, maybe the writer of the article should buy a screwdriver and get free shipping on a tax write-off. Maybe your, maybe your readers would be more likely to build their own PCs and save money and learn something if you promoted that instead of just buying a console. That's a bad idea. Why do you even work at Notebook Check? Because you don't build your own notebook. <laughs> Okay, then why is Notebook Check even Notebooks covering this? Notebooks are like this? the consoles of the computer world. Dude, it's actually kind of a bizarre thing to me. Like, the, the, the amount of coverage that some YouTubers get from traditional media um, when they do something positive versus the amount of coverage that we get when we do something positive and then how everyone, how everyone is talking about it when anything negative happens with us. It's like, so they clearly all know who we are. But only in the context of when there's something negative to report on. It's, it's, do you think we do that with WAN Show? Become a bit of a pattern. I think, think we, we report on positive things. Yeah, but like car companies, we always report when they do bad stuff. Do they ever do good things? 
maybe. Mm, trying to think what we've talked about that's been good lately. <laughs> so far, Flow Plane Chat just thinks they don't do good things. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I mean, things are pretty dystopian these Concept days. Concept cars? I don't yeah, make the rules. I don't know if that, I would consider that a good thing. Anyway, this you, was something that uh, this was something that popped up to me. Um, I do wonder how much coverage whoa. is simply paid. Linus, I hope this finds you well. I am writing in regard to my last email in which we discussed featuring you in the top 10 inspiring leaders of 2024. Nice. As mentioned previously, you will be presented with a two full page profile in the magazine that includes a headshot of the leader, a high resolution PDF of your profile, an HTML link with a backlink, a digital logo, a media press release, and a digital certificate of recognition for the nominal fee of 1500 US dollars. Nice. Dude. These come in extremely regularly and I consider them to be kind of ridiculous and i didn't know that was for some it reason makes sense but for some reason i see a lot more coverage of certain people and i see a lot less coverage of me when something's positive um it's just the the timing of this 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 came in uh, i think about two weeks ago this one and then there's another one last week that i didn't forward to the um to i the think Wednesday there might email. be other reasons I think there are definitely other reasons, but so I don't, I don't, I don't think that's like a reason to witch hunt someone. To be very clear, no, 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 oh, no, no, not that at all. Like, okay, there's, uh, there's definitely people in the tech space that I know get a lot of real organic coverage. Uh, Marquez, for example, gets a ton of organic. Yeah, there's coverage. like, there's no way Marquez is buying any of that. That would be no, yeah. absolutely. I would no be. Chance. I, uh, I would eat a tax write off T shirt. Yeah. If Marquez ever paid to be included in some stupid list. Yeah. So this no is, way. this is not about that. Uh, my point is just that it, it has stood out to me as a pattern that when we do something really cool, it almost seems like there's a deafening silence yeah. of discussion about it. Um, I don't know. There's been exceptions. Seven gamers, one CPU actually got a ton of coverage. <laughs> yeah. It was a long time ago. Oof. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of wonder. There's been exceptions. It was uh, six years ago or who, however long ago. Who did ago I piss off? Uh, yeah. I don't Is know. the answer everyone? I think part of it's that we're Canadian. Here's a weird bit. I was talking to someone recently about like creator events and like creator deals and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I mentioned like, you know, I don't hear about a lot of this stuff. Like I'm obviously not, the business department yeah. takes care of those things. They've taken care of those things for many years. But I was like, a lot of these things... I don't know. And he's like, yeah, that's really weird. I'll like, I'll like make sure I talk to some people and make sure you guys get bumped more. And then I got a message back a couple of days later and he's like, Oh, you guys are Canadians. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, I that happens a lot. Okay. So I think just the border makes things annoying. So then it's just not really worth it. Yep. Honestly, I think that's a lot of it yeah all right and like there was the i was in uh la not that long ago and the same type of thing happened a bajillion people are like hey let's like do stuff because i can get there easily they might not be from there but they can get there really easily americans don't have passports this is another <laughs> problem that we run into often uh which is just like there's a lot of like just not being in the states is like a surprising barrier um, and one that isn't always often communicated, but exists. Yeah, seven gamers, one CPU. It's actually older than I thought. It's eight years ago. Yep. <laughs> hey, the FCC raised their definition of broadband on the very same day that we uploaded that video saying, hey, uh, your internet is probably too fast. And... I knew that that title was going to be a little bit baity because I know a lot of people do not have internet that is uh, too fast. Because oh. what I was oh, talking okay. about was how there's a practical limit to how much benefit you can oh, get no, I from agree. faster internet. I haven't watched it, but I agree. We yeah. basically go through all the <clears throat> reasons you might think you need faster internet. Yeah. And if you don't have a top-of-the-line gaming PC... And your reason is that you want to download games faster. Yeah, it's not going to happen. There's basically, there's, there's not much. Check your system resources. To crack 
to crack gigabit, to get higher than gigabit, you basically need a very modern, high-performance gaming PC um, to crack two and a half gig. Like, because there there are home internet connections that are two and a half gig or even greater. But to 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 reach download speeds that high on anything that needs to be unpacked as you're downloading it, you need like a thread ripper, essentially. Um, and so we go through a lot of the considerations, like how much of your regular surfing is actually going to be a DNS lookup or uh, loading in additional trackers and other content on the page versus what is actually raw download speed. We talk about how download speed... sites even offer that. Download speed spool, yeah. right? Yeah. Most yeah, pages yeah, yeah. are so small, you're not going to get anywhere near... It's not going to... Yeah. Th- this like greater than gigabit speed when you're browsing the web it's just not going to happen we'll ramp up in time we discuss some of the benefits like faster chunk loading if you're watching netflix or youtube or floatplane.com or whatever yeah. the case may be um but we also kind of we also discuss we also kind of debunk some of the big reasons that some people pay for mondo home internet and those are uh you know self-hosting or um w- uh, linux iso sharing we're kind of like, look, I mean, why don't you just um, use a seed box? Get a, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They're so cheap. Both of those things, honestly, unless you're doing it for like home lab, um, I want to learn about IT stuff reasons. Uh, Subakashi yeah, says, just think of a family of five with everyone using it at the same time. Okay, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. What are Done the odds? About it. <laughs> what are the odds that everyone is doing something at exactly the same time and doing something heavy and doing something heavy even if you're all watching see this is something a lot of people don't realize even if you're all watching 4k netflix won't be enough you're all pulling down chunks yeah so you, so you so the, the connection is still gonna sit idle a lot of the time now there are types of content streaming that are less optimized and so we kind of we kind of touch on things like Twitch for example especially broadcasting Twitch but even then the bit rates are so much lower that as long as you've got a few hundred megabit symmetric we're kind of we're kind of at and it's enough point right now where if you have a mondo machine and it's all about you know loading the latest game installing the latest game on your system as fast as possible by all means get a more expensive internet connection or or or, or whatever sure but beyond that until the infrastructure changes outside of your home in the services that you're using we're basically there there isn't an insane amount of incentive for that because honestly load times are pretty darn good things are kind of Fast enough. I mean, Google yeah. stopped even... Uh, we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago, right? Where Google stopped having cached pages because they're just like, yeah, I don't know, the web's pretty reliable. I don't know. Um, anyway, on that same day, the FCC quadrupled the minimum internet speed that's required to label it broadband, which is a really good thing because yes. what I won't argue with is that for a lot of people, their internet is not fast enough. Agreed. Um the agency concluded that the minimum speed an ISP must offer to market their service as broadband should be increased to 100 megabit down, 20 megabit up. This is the first increase since 2015 when it was set at 25.3. Um, I actually think that's pretty reasonable. I think 100 down being broadband is pretty reasonable. And Luke, remember you're a content creator. Upload actually doesn't matter to most people. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I care about it. A I lot. care about it a lot. Yep. Like a lot. Most people are basically never going to use it though. So with that in mind, it's, I wouldn't describe it as the greatest broadband and it doesn't even meet the threshold for what in our video we said would be kind of the most you'd need. It's not, it's not there yet. I would still, I do, I do think more people than in the past are heavily using upload now though more work from home is happening oh that's totally uh, true more school from home is happening and you might not necessarily foresee school from home because the whole rip and peace forever but uh snow days are now being like remote school days that's a that's a bummer um, i know right that sucks okay this is cool hold on hold on i've got a tax write-off update and i've got uh an update from jake on his ai video sorting thing oh nice okay hold on hold on so i'm just gonna run over to luke's camera for a second here. yeah okay so let's oh do you want to switch it to your camera dan got it oh, dan got it. Thank you. 
You can focus on the merch messages. Oh, he needed a break. I understand. This so is very I can at? multitask. Can you read that? Can anyone read that? No. No. Someone so, can. There are two men working on a computer in a shop. Oh, wow. That's completely AI generated. Horrifying. Very reasonable to think that's a factory. Okay. Sup. Sup, stream. There is a man. What's going on? There is a man with a beard and a hat. I mean, yeah. That's true. There's two of them, actually. Yeah, you gotta read it for the people because my mic is way over there. Now. Oh. Well, now you're <laughs> doesn't done. doesn't matter. The point is, uh, it said there are two men in a factory working on a computer, and there's a like, man... What is even happening? Yep, sorry. Drop the ball on that one. There's a man with a beard and a hat smiling. That's AI generated, and that's just chugging through our footage right now. That's pretty good. Creating, are, you, are you wearing a hat in that or a beanie? I can't really see. I'm wearing a hat. Yeah, all right. So it's creating metadata like that that will allow us to search through our footage. So uh, Jake sent me that. And then Nick said, I'm adding tracksuits to lol. Need a couple more minutes. Hold. Hold on. Okay, psycho. They're Go for now. it when you want to. This, this, If these are still available when I get home, I'm buying more. Oh, the dropout? Oh, the dropout's amazing. I have a full red dropout. Yeah. I love it. And it's, it's it's probably my favorite hoodie. At at this price, I would just buy another set of uh, long XL blacks. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, do you want to go to the uh, Do you want to go to the tax write off uh, yep. banner? So we'll have we have everything that is uh, part of the tax so write off event. As well. How much are the track suits? The hoodie. This this is not just red, by the way. The dropout stuff. Um, the tracksuits, twenty bucks. Holy bananas! The jacket, the jackets, jacket. twenty bucks. And then the 20 pants, bucks for the joggers. Nineteen ninety nine. Twenty bucks. Okay. Crazy. Okay, this is actually getting a little bit scary for me. I wasn't sure he was going to add this much stuff. We need um, to add more at this point. No, we don't. Actually. You were suggesting backpack for twenty five bucks. I don't think we're going to add um, anything else at this point. Not a bad idea. If you want to write more stuff off. Um. Pretty good. Okay, we added quite a lot to Pretty it at good. this point. I think that we've added enough. The dropout is absolutely, absolute madness at that price. I know what our costs are on this. Yeah, so both both colors are on sale um, of the... I, I'm not sure why it shows um, the thingy here. Okay, only I, don't, I don't know. The point is that... Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Like these are these are products that have rave reviews. This is the this is the track jacket. Amazing quality, great for the gym. Mohammed, okay, sure. I mean, whatever. Best track jacket I've ever owned. Um, the dropout is the dropout's awesome. This is. Mm, I hesitate to say my favorite hoodie we've ever made. It's fantastic. It's it's the if you if but you're like, on like a Saturday <laughs> off work and you want to just chill, it's the best. It's the best. It might not be the best overall. I don't know, but it's the best for like that. He's got one on. I mean, him. it's the one I'm rocking today. I like traveling with it a lot. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, I hope we reserved a few for after the tax write-off event because potato uh, sack. When are when are the, when is the new potato sack stuff? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, we have samples, but I, I I have no idea when it's coming. I feel like you probably should have waited for the potato PC video for that to launch um i think i well I'm, i mean sure yeah because you like announced it in that video i know okay do i seem like i know what i'm doing <laughs> i told i told him this earlier today i you was are like the youtuber i was like google a, google a picture <laughs> of me <laughs> this was pretty funny i was like google a picture of me <laughs> and then uh <laughs> images does that guy look like he knows what he's doing i mean look at this guy <laughs> you can't even figure out his facial hair yeah I mean, that one doesn't. I mean, does, does does this guy look like he knows what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the that famous birthdays photo? What is uh, up with your hair? Where is it? Up one. This? What what's going on? You've just got the one little oh. twixt. My hair naturally. The one little twixt. My hair naturally fohawks, dude. Like here, look. I, you can you can probably see here. But it's you, just one. Here, you can probably see it right now. Like it. it no, I know. It's always had the yeah, little thing. It, it does this thing. It's from both sides. Like it just kind of like it kind of swoops. I don't get it. 
Dude, I should pull out one Wancho. I should pull out the, the old high school photos of when I had carving in my hair. Carving? I had, yeah. I had like a star on the back of my head and like all this oh, other. Lord. I went to this barber shop Cringe, in Victoria. Brother. Um, and Cringe. he was like, what do you want done? And I was like, I don't know, whatever. And he's like, that's like, that's a dangerous thing to like say here. We do a lot of crazy stuff. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't care. Just whatever you want to do. And I came out with <laughs> some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It was bad. Never went back to it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. The unit count what? goes up. Yeah. I mean, I tried to stop you from doing this. I take zero responsibility. The revenue doesn't go no up. No go up. No go up. But somehow the profit go down. Hmm. Sorry, I just, I'm glued to this report now. Hmm. By cable management arches to go it's with it. It's so weird when you like sell t-shirts for $10 that your profit would go down and you sell hoodies like uh, thick high quality hoodies for like what is it 20 bucks or something? I don't remember. We better not move through all the screen. dropout hoodies because that's an amazing bucks. hoodie. Um, $25. Crazy. Jeebus. Wow. So the cheaper than most places will sell a t-shirt we're selling a hoodie. That's cool. That's good. We're writing it off. That's we're not, really good. Yeah, we're not selling it. We're writing it off. You do? Can you not do both? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually getting a little bit of anxiety Why now. I was kind of having fun earlier in the show, and I've come down a bit. Welcome. Um. Cool. So I guess it's AMD time for the after party. Ups the hurt. Yeah. Yeah, the AMD ups the hurts. Um, basically, to have a free sync or free sync premium label on your product, you have to support higher refresh rates for gaming. It's, it's good. Yeah. Okay, after dark uh, time. Please subscribe to Float Plane. Yeah. Yeah, the Ludwig video is great. I'm sure there's going to be more cool stuff. Yeah. Now's a good time to subscribe to Float Plane. I'd appreciate that. What's that, Dan? 8%. Okay, cool. Um, do I have any comfort food? I do. Oh, excellent. Okay. All right, the creator, are you ready? You got to answer some stuff. Uh-huh. Yep. I'm going to try to go through... I don't think I can read them to you, because I still have 265 to go. Yeah, I can do that. You keep chugging. Let me see if I can even get through incoming. Oh, right, I can just minimize it. You just <clears throat> pop it down. It's very usable. Yeah. All right. Howdy, the wanshow.dll. I'm starting a music hardware company and I'm curious, with your products, has there been anything, good or bad, that customers focused on that you didn't expect them to? Thank. Huh. Um. Something they focused on that we didn't expect. I feel like, um, like I'm the, the sort of anal retentive person who who yep. is going to flip out if something's even remotely wrong but with is there it. like a reason why they liked a product that you didn't necessarily foresee being a popular reason or something like that like focused on doesn't necessarily mean negative no 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 i get it i get it um man uh this is this is really hard i'm loading up the store and i'm going to look at our products Oh, okay, here's something. I didn't think people would care so much about our screwdriver bits being black. That okay. black coating is actually functional. Um, and it has something to do with something, something, the metal better, something. Uh, but it's cosmetic after that fact. Um, so we've had people try to initiate return requests because the black coating has come off of their bits. Um, that was something. <laughs> that was weird not something i expected people to focus on yeah uh Fair enough. there i came up with something good, good job. job linus yeah uh hey linus i actually work at a badminton facility or i should broadcast this uh i collect shuttles at the end of the mm, that didn't work uh-oh it's okay just read it uh i collect shuttles at the end of the day my question is why don't we ever see shuttles that behave like feather ones, but are nearly indestructible? Ah, so they're working on that. 
Um, I've actually tried a couple of them. Here's uh, Victor's Carbon Sonic. So these are synthetic feather shuttles. Uh, the ones that I've used, I don't think they were this one. I think they were a different one, but very similar. They use almost a foam-like material here, and they do last substantially longer than feather shuttles and don't have some of the same um, animal cruelty concerns as feather shuttles. But I think it's going to be quite a while before we see any kind of professional tournament move to something like this because... While they have a benefit in terms of cost, they do not fly quite the same. Mm -hmm. It's nature is one heck of a good designer. And as it turns out, synthetically or mimicking the properties of a natural material with a synthetic one is extremely, extremely difficult. <clears throat> and I mean, it's... Uh, has, like, uh, yeah, I don't think the, like, will the NBA ever move beyond leather balls? Like, why? I don't think so. Like, it's, yeah, it's the same. That, that 3D printed basketball recently, which was mm -hmm. pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool. But unless it is actually identical, I just don't see it happening. It's the same with baseballs. They're going to be leather forever because at that <laughs> level, they can afford the real one. And so you might see. In fact, you do see, like, you play, like, a minor B game or whatever, you're going to be playing with, like, a hunk of plastic because it doesn't matter. They're just going to huck it in a pitching machine. It's going to get chewed up anyway. But at an elite level, I think natural materials are going to be king for the foreseeable future. And when it comes to marketing, you always market what the pros use. So there's always going to be that, that aspiration to, to use the natural material, the, the, like, the real one. Natural material is always going to be real, no matter how fraught it is with, you know, ethical concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, it's, this one is curated technically. Um, I don't think it did work. Uh, first time I've remembered to add a merch message and I'm wasting it on this meta joke about wasting a merch message. Love you, Dan. Nice. 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 Um, that got curated it did um, <laughs> nice good job dad i suspect that was a misclick uh hello wan dll luke i'm relatively i'm a relatively new it director of a booming it team what criteria do you use to give junior admins or engineers admin passwords or the keys to the kingdom for critical infra uh generally it's are you aj um, if the answer is no, Flow chart. Then, <laughs> then no, <laughs> if the answer is yes, then yeah. Um, so AJ has been with us over five years now. Um, seven years. Shut up. Has Pretty it been sure. seven? Pretty sure. He, st he technically started helping me with things. Mm, that's right. In a non-professional capacity in 2016. Good Lord. Uh, that was super light. Okay. Um, by the time we're in 2017, things are ramping up. He's still technically non-professional capacity at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, he's working with us full time. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's different. It's very difficult though. It's actually really hard. Um, you need to not, one thing that you need to communicate to your team that I think is actually really important to communicate is that it's not a sign of respect it's it's no seriously though it's it's no i was just i was looking at our um, oh, sales report yeah 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 um having the keys is a threat for everyone it's not right. a good thing you don't want too many people to have access to stuff you want generally at least two admins on every system just in case something goes wrong with one of the admin accounts, you can still recover it or whatever. Um, but other than that, you really want to limit it as much as possible. And what you might end up wanting to do, because uh, it sounds like your team might be fairly sizable, is to have some like uh, areas of ownership. So you have a person who has the keys to a certain like portion of the IT department, um, but they don't have it for all of it. And then a different person has it for another portion and then you have it for all of them or something like that. But there shouldn't be very many people that have it for all of them. Ideally just kind of one. And then, uh, some people that have smaller amounts. It's, it's an accountability. Ah, it's a risk vector. 
because every account has a potential to be compromised. So even if like every single person at LTT was perfectly trustworthy, which I'm sure they are, um, if we gave every single person full admin rights to every single thing, then every single person's account is now a major, insanely scary attack vector to owning everything that we have. Um, so you just, you don't want to do that. Um, so you, the, it's like, I have people on my team that are like happy when they lose permissions to things because they're like, oh, I don't have to like worry about this thing so much anymore, which is good. Um, yeah, I don't know. So it's scary. Try to, try to slowly creep your trust with people, um, like increase it slowly. Um, Yeah. Fun fact, one of the reasons why when I was at school, I was seriously thinking about becoming a database administrator was because I was like, hey, if I'm in control of all your data, you're probably going to pay me pretty well. <laughs> that and was if the you theory. don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I, when you have access to extremely important things and all that type of stuff, it, it comes with, it, you are a, a, a portion of risk and you know, that person's probably going to be taken care of decently well. That was a thought process. Um, I ran out of curateds already. Uh, I don't know if that's because... Oh, nope. Okay. They're loading. <laughs> Did you just do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I was looking at that one going like, the f is this <laughs> uh, hi guys linus are you open to criticism no turn it off would you be willing to have turn it a off now discussion slash interview with someone who didn't like you before august turn it off now and now, and now are and now are giving you a second chance to see if it's better second chance to what the fuck are you talking about like am i open to criticism I, i'm here Give it to me. I don't understand why you would do that. Uh, because I almost don't understand why you do almost any interview. Um, I don't do many. No, Very few people ask me. Yeah. Um, Maybe you end up doing like a Colin and Samir video someday. I don't know. I kind of doubt it. But I kind of doubt it. We're not it. really mainstream. Yeah. We're, the, we're, like, we're a big fish in a really, really small, small pond. pond. Um, like actually very small. I think a lot of people massively overestimate how big the space is. And and the thing is, like, yeah, we're 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 big on YouTube, but that's also a small pond. Like on YouTube, companies like Dude Perfect are big. And you know what? Those guys are killing it. Oh yeah. They're crushing doing it. They're great. doing awesome. Yeah. For like, you know, a group of entrepreneurs. Not they're not running you know a multinational business in the same way that really big businesses are operating it's just not it's just not on the same scale right and um I, i'll sometimes i find yeah. you know I, we talked a long time ago you, you mentioned the 100 million dollar offer thing yeah um and then i'll see some company that like i think is small and it's like oh they just sold for 980 million dollars yeah. i'm like whoa <laughs> Or people are like, wow, I can't believe they were able to acquire this company for, company for so cheap. It was only... Chumpany. Chumpany, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Who were you uh, talking about? That <laughs> Freudian slip, though. <laughs> I can't believe they were able to get them so cheap for only $2.7 billion. And I'm like, oh. Oh! People are out there doing stuff. Um, Corey is the name. Corey is the name has a great response to this. Tell the kind man thank you for giving you a second chance. I appreciate it. I do actually. Thanks. I do. I do actually. Um, as for as for being open to criticism, my word. Um, I have been criticized from the moment I first <laughs> uploaded a video, and people talked about Thanks my worse. my f earrings yeah. or you know whatever else or my awful high pitched voice. Um, to the moment that you are sitting in right now, uh, telling me you didn't like me. <laughs> prior to august and now you have to have an interview with them but you're willing to consider <laughs> if you can like me now will you now spend trip. your time doing this um hey i i i do appreciate it though um the 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 cold hard truth I appreciate though, the is, second chance yeah i do i do appreciate that and um you know if you if if you're chill then i'm chill and if you're not then that's you know what that's okay too because at the end of the day 
I just got to do my thing here. Um, that that's what YouTube is. It's from your perspective, you, but but it's me, right? And uh, for a lot of people, that's going to resonate, and for a lot of people, that's not going to resonate. And um, you know, we're just going to be us. We'll be here. If you're, uh, if, if it's third chance time another time because you didn't like my response to that, then hey. I feel like that might happen. <laughs> I'm still going to be here for that too, though. I'll be here. <sighs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that one. I was like, all right, Kieran. Um, I got one. Uh, sure, let's do it. Congrats on the MCM launch. Question for little L. Uh, what was the hardest part about selecting the components of each pack of the MCM? All right, go ahead and ask him. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, we were we were trying to make sure that um, we had a pretty safe balance of what most people would need for kind of the, the targeted, the stated use for them. So what we did was... Uh, we went around to people's desks. We asked people about their home setups here at the office because we're pretty representative of gamers and techies. And we kind of did it. And we were like, okay, how much did we need without overspending? And then we built bundles based on that. Oh, that makes some sense. I got a question about my setup a while ago. And I didn't bother ask like why they were asking these questions. But I was like, what? <laughs> and I think it was probably related to that. Um, next question. Uh, I'm 37. Oh, I should broadcast. I'm 37 and had both hips replaced last month. If you could replace any part of your body with titanium, what would it be? My head. That's pretty good. Yeah, because you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Uh, Got him! <laughs> if it worked just as well, but was less susceptible to damage... I think my spine. Mm, that'd be pretty sick. But that's like, that's just like a worst case scenario insurance policy. Whereas if you went with like the knees, yeah. then you'd know it's definitely useful. It's pretty, or hips. Yeah. Hips are hips. huge, dude. They don't lie. Break your, <laughs> the, the <laughs> fatality percentage after breaking your hip is mm, insane. That's true. Like it's actually crazy. How are we doing, boys? Uh, we ran out of curate. It's never I better, just, Dan. I just, uh, I just gave up and left. Yeah, I, I saw that. Noticed. Well, no, he was probably going to work on the after party. No, I was just crying. Mm, I was yeah. just crying outside. Oh. I was going to say, I think he just took a break. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go that way. You went this way. Yeah, there's a, there's oh, okay. a quiet server room where <laughs> nobody can hear you sad. Um, um, you mean do, scream? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I have no mouth. Um... <laughs> Did you want two cameras or one camera? Um, Same as last week or Dan, more, more advanced? Dan, why don't you tell us what you have the strength for? <laughs> I can jump as high as you want, Linus, no matter what hour of the day or um, how long my shift has been. How easy is the second camera? <laughs> what about second camera? What, what about second camera? <laughs> I'm, I'm starting these Linusisms and it's becoming a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, it, it, after last week, it's it's trivial now. So okay, um, how but, long are you going to be to get through these three hundred and sixty-two merch? Messages? We're not going to get through them all today. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna do some of them, and then we'll we'll go up and we'll do super checks, and then we'll call it there. Because um, you don't know this, but um, I have to be at the airport in like six hours or something like that. So okay. I, oh, I also one am incentivized camera? to not be here forever. Oh. Let's do one camera. It yeah, could one be camera. two. One camera. It could be two. I'm doing two cameras. It's better. It looks better. How many better. games do you want to do? It looks I mean, better. It's, it's got to be best of seven or it's barely even hockey. Oh my God. I think best of five is the I way. think best of five is the way if you're a coward. Wow. Are you a what coward? What does that even mean? Are Luke, you a why, yellow belly? Why would that be more coward? Luke has Wouldn't a skill issue be... and he doesn't want anybody to know it. I tell everyone I lose most of the Got him. I will. I will wreck both of you. Let's play. Ah. Let's play a different game. Well, <laughs> yeah, because you can't win at super checks. That's true. <laughs> He's oh spicy God. tonight. I like. Him I'm like very this. tired. <laughs> I will break you. Um. All right. I'm cool. excited for when Dan and I work out again. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we're doing mastery sets for Hell every single yeah. workout. Hell yeah, let's let's go. I almost said a bad word. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go get another camera, uh, unless you guys want to end the stream or something like that. We uh, could do that together. Yeah, we'll... Um, no, right. No, not yet. Not okay. Yet. Yeah, not, not yet. We, we should do we a gotta, few more. We, we should got do a few quite more. quite a bit more. Give me, give me 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, <laughs> We're still getting a merch message every 10 seconds, Luke. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We should do more of these, though. Um, yeah, we'll do a few more, but, like, oh, my gosh, uh, this is ridiculous. I'll let you chew on this one for a second, then I'll go try to deal with more of them. Uh, hey, DLL, I'm going to broadcast. Hey, DLL, I have a question. F uh, I've had this question for a while for Linus. Between your relationship, between your wife, Yvonne, and your husband, Luke, which has had more development? <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> that's actually a decent question i mean the one where you have kids together is going to be the one gonna, yeah. where you have the biggest questions to answer because at the end of the day it better be <laughs> as much as we as much as we like to as much as we care deeply about our team here um there's a difference between the relationship of a group of co-workers and the relationship of your flesh and blood. Um, and, and while we, um, while we want what's best for the team and while the team wants what's best for the company at the end of the day, I believe that money corrupts everything. And I think that because money is inherent in an employer-employee relationship, the capacity... There's still money involved in... Well, I was going to get to that. Okay. The capacity for it to corrupt the relationship is almost guaranteed. Like, every work relationship pretty much ends at some point, and there are exceptions. But if you compare that to the capacity of money to corrupt a family relationship, which is great, which is huge. The percentage less, less is, guaranteed. is lower. Yeah. And, and let's not kid ourselves. Money <laughs> destroys many families. Especially, I think, right now where cost of living is so high and it's so financially beneficial to split the rent with split the rent of one room with another person. Yeah, maybe taint uh, is the right word instead of corrupt, says Mawson on Floatplane. That's probably right. Um, I think that, and you know, obviously it, right. Okay. This is a perfect example because the thing I was about to say comes from a position of, uh, of a power imbalance in the relationship. I was going to say, I don't feel like money has corrupted or tainted mine and Luke's relationship. Not yet. If it hasn't yet, I, I, I feel like it would be pretty tough. For but that's easy for me to say in my position. And so the dynamic's always there. It's always something that has to be kind of considered um, and that I, I, I have to be aware of and have to be, and I have to be careful of um, because, because that potential for taint, that potential for corruption is always there even if it never seeps in if that kind of makes sense do you kind of get what i mean no it is yeah it's uh i often consider things i might say because because you might only think of this from linus's perspective but there's things that i can say that could be very charged as well sure like okay here's an example that could go both ways you know, if I were to, if I were to make uh, a comment like, uh, okay, let's say I was getting married. This is a big thing right now. Uh, millennials are, are apparently destroying their relationships over destination weddings. Oh. Um, not their relationships with the spouse, but their yeah, relationships no, with their you. families yeah, yeah, yeah. over destination yeah. weddings yeah, yeah. and the costs associated with it. If I were to get butt hurt over Luke refusing to attend my stupid destination wedding and I were to somehow oh, yeah. make that about the money that I know he has, right? Because why do I know that? I only know how much money Luke has because he works damn hard for it and at the end of the day, I sign the check. But that's not a normal dynamic in a relationship. And in this equal but opposite, if I start complaining about expenses... It can put pressure on me the, the, the human being, the friend, 
that wouldn't normally be there if he was just a bro complaining about expenses. Which, like, I I have at times, but, but I try to be pretty careful with it, and I try to make sure that I'm presenting things the right way, yep. and I often am paying attention. And so... And it's always been fine. It's something we both have to worry about a little bit. Yeah. Because there's that potential there. Like, okay, here's, a, here's another really great example. Okay, when it comes to food, right... It would be very easy for Luke to be upset that knowing as he does my financial situation as well, Uh. it would be easy for him to be upset if I just didn't offer to pay for everything. But then it would be easy for me to be upset if Luke didn't offer to pay for things at the very least, because I might feel taken for granted. I might feel taken advantage of. So these are the kinds of dynamics that will always exist, but that I feel like we're both cognizant of yeah. and that we're both respectful about yeah. and that we try to keep out of our relationship but it's a conscious effort i guess is what i'm trying to say yeah every relationship whether it's romantically involved or not is gonna have some amount of work element to it yeah uh yeah i mean <laughs> relationships are a lot of work yeah and and work is tough on a relationship like it, it it's cuts worth it. every way to be clear yeah it's worth it you should try to have like your the amount of friends you have is going to dwindle over time. It really um, does, doesn't it? Pretty pretty intensely. Um, I think we might have some... And I started with like three. So like... <laughs> I think we might have some somewhat unique uh, things going on there. Because um, I, I mean, mo- my like core friend group has always been cool and I suspect they will always be cool. But there's some like people that I was more on the acquaintance level with that will reach out randomly and I'm like... Now I am automatically primed and suspicious of like, is this what because of, yeah, is this because of public presence? Is this because you need something, whatever? And it almost always is. One I've, of those two things. I've told Yvonne before, cause she, she and I, she and I talk doomsday scenarios. It's a hobby. Um, yeah. and, and, and she has said things like, well, it would be easy for you to find someone. Um, and just not in like an, like angry way, but just in like a d- debating way. We, we, we talk, right? You know, you're, you're married long enough. You talk about everything eventually. And I kind of went, well, right. But what would that be? Yeah. Because totally. it's, the, it's going to be charged. Would I ever? Sure. You're right. Honestly, at, at, at my, at my age and, and like being a YouTuber, which is from my understanding, kind of desirable thing. And, you know, having a pretty, pretty decent amount of money, you know, could I, could I find, uh, could I find a meat thing to spend time with? I, I don't, I don't really okay, question chat. that. You don't need to get all. Yes. If would do fine. You don't need to, <laughs> Oh, she would. you don't need to <laughs> propose in she, chat right now. She'd have no trouble banging. I, I have no doubt because, <laughs> Because the same thing is also true in the uh, inverse, right? Yeah. She is also very eligible, you know, as a, as a bachelorette. So, but, but, but what I said, what I said to her was like, yeah, I have no question that I could find something, but would I ever find that genuine I'm going spark? to be trying to seek the same quality that I previously had. I would never I'm, find I'm, it. And I'm going to have to find someone that is worth the amount of work and effort that we did to get to where we are. And I'm going to have to do all of that again. Uh, do you want to have the small conversations again all the way to build up so that you can have the big conversations? Like, is that effort you actually want to go through at this time? I was talking to you. And every time I would be suspicious. Oh, 100%. Like, Yvo- okay, Yvonne, 100%. Yvonne and I do not have a prenuptial agreement. Do you know why? Because there was no f-ing money. <laughs> there were no assets. Like there, I've seen, I've seen people talk about how like Yvonne married him for the money or whatever. I, I, it would have been the other way around at that time. She had a much better outlook than I did when we got together. You guys gotta, you gotta understand that. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. Could I ever trust another person the way that I trust Yvonne? Like Yvonne has complete power of attorney. She has complete control of all of our financial assets. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that require only her signature. And do you know how I sleep at night? Soundly. Like a f***ing baby. (laughs) 
sorry. That one part happens before the sleep. It doesn't matter. The point is that... You know what? I'd probably be fine with Yvonne having those things for me, too. She is... <laughs> extremely responsible, reasonable person. An absolute rock. Yeah. And I was thinking about, even if I met Yvonne today, could I trust her the way that I do? Honestly, probably not, no. Knowing about the dynamic. Yeah, no. Would I have a prenup? Yeah, probably. probably. Almost certainly. And I have always viewed that as a sign, as a, as a, and, and, and I've had the, I've had the luxury of it because it never mattered when I like formed this opinion. Right. Yeah. But I always viewed the prenup as, as planning for failure. If I was, if I was, I hold on. Yeah. If you asked me again today, because I was single and, and pursuing a, a long-term relationship, I wouldn't, I would say it's an insurance policy in case of a catastrophic disaster. But I had, the, I had the luxury of being allowed to be naive because I did manage to find a relationship where it wasn't necessary. It was never needed. Um, so the point is that, um, I forget where we were going with this, but I saw a really great comment from Fox in a Box on Floatplane. Um, at Luke and Linus, I think, as you guys just discussed, any issue can be overcome if both people are trying, and sometimes the effort alone is more important than any issue. And I just thought that was uh, that was really wise. It's about what you built, and you might have been able to build it with a variety of people. Like there's the the whole like there's only one fish in the sea for you, and they happen to be in your hometown is just hilarious. No, like, my, it, my thing my thing with Yvonne is uh, I don't believe in soulmates, but yeah. If I did, then I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if uh, I did, I'd believe you're it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is which is great. You want to ideally find someone that you're like, yeah. yeah, this this could be if if that was true, this person could be it. There's like no way it's true. But what really builds that is the the effort and the work that you put into it and this this like castle that you collaboratively build together. Um that is ideally you know, strong. We are not getting through all these merch messages. No, but I have some curated ones we for you. We literally have 40 more <laughs> than we did before we started that one. Nice. Um, question for Linus. Uh, <laughs> uh, how did you like the hydrofacial? Is it something you would recommend and will you be getting another one? Um, I don't know. You tell me. So I've, I've always been transparent to a fault. So the hydrofacial was step one. And then after that, I did Morpheus 8, which is uh, three treatments of subdermal um, RF, essentially. And what it's meant to do RF? is radio frequency. Really? Yeah. So oh. it, it essentially burns you. I was going to say radio frequency is like a joke. I oh, no it hurts a lot. Wow. Um, but what it's meant to do is damage the, the subdermal layer, whatever layer that is, in a way that stimulates collagen production, which is essentially what makes your skin youthful. You produce more of it when you're younger. And as you age, you produce less of it. Yeah. So from my point of view, and I've discussed this on the show before, uh, my mug is a business asset at a certain point yep. and taking care of it. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not into, you know, going out and dramatically altering my personal appearance, but if there's pretty minor things that I can do to maintain them as, at least until we can, you know, go full, uh, VTuber, um, <laughs> then I see it as a, I see it as a pretty worthwhile investment. So I guess my answer to that question is, I don't know. <laughs> you guys tell me uh, this is the first time this is, was the first time I'd done anything so um, I have no idea yeah I, I know um, I'm not really good with that stuff though I didn't notice when you first shaved your beard off yeah my aunt, my aunt too she thought she thought I got a haircut <laughs> which I technically I did yeah fair enough yeah yeah but she and my uncle they had dinner with me and they were like when they arrived home they were like <laughs> and messaged me <laughs> they're great that's pretty good um black smoke rise says I haven't noticed anything at all I guess it's working then. 
because that's kind of the point. The point is that if you if you do it right, it's supposed to look like you've done nothing at all. Um, and you just look, you know, rested. Right. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's uh, that's it. Uh, people mentioned your face was a bit redder than usual. Yeah, so in some of the videos, it's, oh, yeah. it's redder than usual because I just got stabbed a thousand times in the face. Yeah. Which hurts, by the way. Yes. It'll happen. Um, yeah. However, How bad? in the Vision Pro, uh, well, here, give me a sec. Uh, for the Vision Pro video, uh, it was the Vision Pro. Yes. Uh, and any speculation that it was makeup or anything is silly. Uh, it was just that it just doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit me very well. Um, I'd say, here, let's see. Oh, it's really hard because it's like, it's kind of like a hot, it's kind of like a hot pain, but it's like kind of in the, it's weird because each shot is, I think, 24 needles at a time, but it feels like one. Hmm. And they were explaining it to me. It's because like, you only have so many nerves yeah. and so multiple penetrations of the skin. I almost blacked out uh, last time because the first time you go, the energy is pretty low. And then they turn it up if you tolerate it well. And the first wow. time I tolerated it very well. So I'm, I'm a fainter, um, which means any time that my skin gets broken and I experience any kind of blood loss, it's like a, it's like a, they're, they're not sure exactly what causes it, whether it's physiological or psychological or some combination of the two. Um, I ran into one nurse once who told me that um, she wasn't one. She got struck by lightning. She became one. Uh, but basically what Whoa. happens is, um, and Crazy. so so nurses or anyone who does um, a blood drawing or injections or anything will, will be familiar with the term. But um, what it means is the second you uh, your skin is broken, your, your body basically goes into uh, a semi state of shock oh, no. yeah. where it focuses on maintaining circulation to your vital organs. And so what happens is whenever I get blood drawn, uh, my extremities go like immediately, like immediately ice cold. Um, and when I found this out, um, it was at a time when I was, I was in quite a compromised state. Like I was getting blood drawn because I was really sick uh -huh. and um, this poor nurse, she must've been like 90 pounds soaking wet. Um, she's, she's trying to draw blood from me. And one of the challenges is that they got to be in there forever because my blood stops flowing. <laughs> right. So they take it from the arm and my body's all like, yo, you made a hole in my arm. I'm gonna keep all the blood here. Thank you very much. So my blood stops flowing. Um, so she's on like the fourth vein in the second arm by this point, because I had forgotten, I hadn't had blood taken in a long time. And I'd forgotten that when I was a kid, I needed a butter butterfly needle uh, because it's a smaller, it's a smaller needle, but with a, with a wider uh, inner diameter. So they don't have to make as big of a hole and the blood flows more easily. They're more expensive. So you have to ask for them. Um, so I forgot that I needed a butterfly needle or else it's really difficult to draw blood for me, those, but, yeah. but it, it had been 10 or 15 years since I'd had blood drawn. Yeah, so I yeah. didn't remember. Yeah. Um, so anyway, she's like, she's going at it, like perforating my arm with this regular needle and not able to get any friggin' blood out of it. And all of a sudden I kind of, I'm like, Oh, um, I'd never blacked out before, but I was like, Oh, my vision's going kind of dark. She goes, you need to get your head between your legs right now because I cannot hold you in this chair. <laughs> She's like it's tiny. And I was in an elevated chair so that at a standing height, it would was easy a... for her to work on my arm. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so I would have just plowed into the ground. I would have broken my nose. Like we would have had blood everywhere. Uh, never mind in the vials. Mission um, accomplished. That actually doesn't work. And so she was the one who explained it to me after I didn't black out that time. Uh, but she explained it to me. Um, and she basically goes, yeah, it's this, it's this, it's not a condition, but it's, it's a thing. Um, and so she had me lie down and she took my blood that way. We, we got the butterfly needle and she's like, okay, so you need to remember this. You need a butterfly needle. You need to tell people when they're drawing blood from you that you're a fainter so that they can put you somewhere where you're not gonna, where you're not gonna black out and like crush them. Um, uh, where, where, where was I going with this? I forget the question. Uh, right. So perforating my face. No. Oh. So in this case, I was actually lying down, but so I don't know if it was pain or if it was penetration, uh, cause they can also go deeper. Do you bleed? Um, like I had like, it looked like I nicked myself with a razor in like two spots by the end of it. So in general, no. Yeah. 
Uh, but you're red. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering, like, the, is it the blood loss or is it? Yeah. No, it's not blood loss. It's like, I, I, I don't know. No, they don't seem to really fully understand it. Okay. Uh, but I almost blacked out. I was like, yo, uh, my vision's starting to darken. Uh, and she's like, whoa, okay, let me get you some chocolate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. It's a fun side effect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently some of the, like, Botox, it's pretty relatively common for people to black out. But with this one, she'd never seen it before. And she's oh, wow. like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so I'm a fainter. I guess that applies to this. <laughs> Good to know. Um, I did black out one time when um, a buddy for an insurance company was taking blood from me at my house. And, um, what I remember was, uh, me telling him, Hey, I'm a fainter. I was in the chair. Um, yeah, I, I feel kind of faint. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go over on that. Um, I have like the, uh, it's called a uh, love sack is the brand, but it's like a big bean bag. I'm going to go over on that bean bag and, um, s give me a sec. And I closed my eyes and I opened them and he's like, you've been out for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so um so that's a thing yeah. um not bryce says butterfly needle is a myth i'm a nurse uh blah 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 something no it's not a myth I, I can tell you for an absolute fact that even if i am not looking they just can't get blood out of me without one so um that's cool i'm glad that you have that expertise but as someone who actually cannot have blood taken from them Got with a regular him. needle. Um, and this has been confirmed by multiple, multiple nurses and technicians over the years. Um, sorry. Yep. Uh, okay, more merch messages. One for me. Uh, Luke, my birds, Kirby and Carl finally like each other enough to snuggle and groom each other what cool milestones have you hit with your birds one thing that i like i always enjoy this is uh learning to communicate with people or animals or whatever else with with language barriers obviously with animals there's gonna be language barriers but um and like learning habits and stuff so my birds for a long time there if we'd let them out to fly to get them to go to bed they have terrible night vision so I would turn most of the, the lights down and use like the, the glowing from my computer and stuff like that so that I could see. Um, and I would catch the birds in the dark and then physically put them back in their cage. And that was the like nighttime activity. And they knew it was coming because they'd see me get up and start turning the lights off and they'd start chirping and stuff. Um, I started to try to teach them to get back in the cage themselves. And I would do that by like physically blocking off the other areas that they were at so sometimes they like to hang out just on top of the cage so i'd wait for them to come back to on top of the cage then i would kind of dome my arms over to be like look i am blocking the flying up area and then if they like indicated they were going to go to a certain side i would shift over and block that and eventually try to like kind of corral them over towards the edge of the cage and then make it so that the the easiest way for them to fly would be to fly into the cage um, and I, this took a while to kind of train them to do, but now at this point, if, if I just dome over the top of the cage like that, they'll pretty much automatically just run to where the cage entrance is. And then I don't even have to like do the rest of it. They'll just hop off and fly into the door. Um, and that was pretty cool. Something someone pointed out is that in different regions, um, there may be slightly different meanings. So of what a butterfly needle is. Yeah. So there are lots of different kinds and there's like, it's the tape that goes on it that makes it a butterfly needle. So here it means a particular thing. It means a lower gauge that has a finer needle with a, sorry, I shouldn't say lower gauge cause lower gauge is bigger, but cause I don't know, imperial measurements. Um, it means a finer needle that has a narrower wall, um, in order to make it easier to, to, to get into the vein. Um, your mileage may vary. Maybe they have like gigantic, thick, thick walled butterfly needles where you are and it won't help at all. So then if you are in a similar situation, then what you would ask for is just a finer gauge needle or whatever. Um, so your mileage may vary. Yeah. All right. Uh, greetings, LTT. Greetings, LTT. Some videos blur logos, even on shirts. Why? You work at media i was curious what decides if you have to pay a brand or the brand has to pay you to have logo in content um hold on 
I think for us, it's more about that we're just kind of inconsistent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, there are cases where we're, where we have a high level of intent when we cover a logo with gaff tape or when we don't. Um, if a brand sponsor of a video is like, hey, yo, I'm Masseuse and I sponsored your video and you're using an MSI monitor. Look, I'm not super mad because like we weren't promoting monitors, but like. Could you have not? Really, brother? Yeah. Then we'll go and we'll blur it. Yeah. Um, for monitors that we use on set a lot, uh, we try to kind of proactively just do it because like whatever. Um, we get very, very little product placement revenue. Uh, occasionally we've done stuff on WAN show. Like I think that's the origin of these, but secret lab. Then we just is, kept them. Then we just like keep them forever. Cause like what I'm going to, I'm going to tape over it. Yeah. Like that just, it feels really transactional. If someone does do a sponsorship or something, and then the second it's over, we're like, I'm going to put tape on it. It's tape day. I'm we're like, going to spend money in order to... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, in order, in, order to, in order to get you less value for that deal that we did together. Like, I, I yeah. don't know. I'm just, I, I feel like I'm just not that petty. If they want to update the chairs and pay us again or something like that, like, sure, but... Uh, AJ says, I am a fainter, can confirm I need to ask for the butterfly needle and usually need to be slightly reclined. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, sorry. All right, what else we got? Um, I burned my curateds. Uh, oh man, I'm for some reason I'm scrolled all the way down to archived. We, we have more than we had. I, um, yeah, have you seen, uh, so here's, here's one. I mean, some of these are just like meme, like I can just click show, oh <coughs> crap. Yeah, because they're just in incoming. The, uh, the, oh, the LTD screwdriver has been made in the largest uh, man-made mine shaft on earth, apparently. I accidentally clicked show on used? that one. Been used in there? I, yeah, oh. mine, mine shaft. Hold on. I, I archived it by accident. <laughs> Control F shaft. Oh, there's a lot of shaft. Oh, oh, right, because many of our items have shafts. It's not in the message. I get it. Oh, oh, there's a lot of shafts. <laughs> That's got to be one of the greatest Linus quotes. Um, okay. Uh, did you see the Star Wars Battlefront re-release? Have you seen this? I'm I've kind seen of surprised that it's a this mess. wasn't in the... It uses dog. like six to eight times the storage of the original games, and like there's all kinds of problems. I have, I'm sure it's happened before. I've personally never seen something on Steam. Y you know, we, we saw with hmm, Baldur's Gate 3, had to insert it somehow. The show was almost over. Um, we've seen with some games that they, they get overwhelmingly positive. This game, I've never seen this before. Overwhelmingly negative reviews. <laughs> never seen it before. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, the, the merch message says they released the PC game from 2005 on multiple systems. Or they really, sorry. It barely works, and the original, which is the same game, runs much better. <laughs> That's a rip. Heck yeah, Charles L. <laughs> um... Amando asks, hey Linus, do you think that improvements in wafer yields by TSMC, for example, have contributed to the death of the entry-level segment for both CPUs and GPUs? I don't think it's improvements in wafer yields. I think it's increases in cost. It's just not worth building anything around um, such a, at such a low price point. It's, it's, there's far better cost savings to be had by integrating things more versus building an entire discrete product. Like, why would you build a $50 board around uh, a $50 GPU when you can build a $60 board around a $100 GPU and sell that for 300 bucks? You know, like, it's just not worth it when you could take that small amount of die area and just put it right onto a CPU and get essentially the same benefit because it already had to have a memory controller and cache anyway. Um, I, th I think it's more just the the general march towards more integration and less anything to do with TSMC's yields. Uh, archive. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. How about five more? Does that seem reasonable? Nope. Okay. You gotta do all of them. Um, okay, Christian asks, I got my mystery color screwdriver. Amazing colors. Love it. Compared to my black driver, the finish is not as perfect. Linus, what were the compromises you had to swallow and how hard was it for you? We basically had to, um, yeah, accept that the, the flow of the, uh, of the plastic wouldn't quite be the same. So if you look really closely at some of the color ones, they have, uh, some swirl in the dye and in the color that is not present on the black ones. And, um, 
that's the kind of thing you actually have to put a lot of work into to get exactly right. I read a really interesting article about how the Xbox Series X, they wanted to do it in white and realized, um, oh, the only reason the black one looks good is because all of these swirls were hidden by the black color and they had to like completely redo the molds or something like that oh, in order no. to make a white one. Yeah, it's, it's a color <sighs> is really, 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 really hard. So I basically was just like, well, I want multicolored screwdrivers at LTX and we're going to have them, damn it. So... <laughs> Yeah, there's there's some imperfections, but they're really cool. So whatever, they're cool. Damn it, <laughs> I'm over it. Uh, hey Dan, we're gonna do like four more, and then we're just gonna have to call it because there's simply too much. Like guys, this is what we're dealing with here. Okay, we've got uh, we've been live for four hours. We've had sixteen hundred merch messages. Things have died down a little bit. We're only getting about one a minute. But you guys think about it. By this point in the show, we've been down to zero a minute for quite some time and we're, we're we're chewing through them whereas now we are still it takes us more than a minute to do a, a curated merch message oh I mean, good that's lord it went true. up they don't all go to curated yeah but we also do a lot it takes a lot more than a minute on average so i'm kind of fudging the numbers both ways there's also um, 1,114 left in the queue to display. Yeah. So that will show up when we go to the outro. That'll be awesome. I'm excited about that. Oh I've been God. excited about that the whole show, to be honest. I keep thinking about it. Yeah, because so the, exciting. this is not, I don't even know if this is the highest revenue WAN show we've ever done. Like when Screwdriver launched so. and Backpack launched, I think it was higher revenue. Yeah. But in terms of item quantity. I think it's the highest for that. I think this is also highest merch message. Yeah. Quantity as well. Like, this is ridiculous. Tax write-off shirts are over 2,000 now. Um, oh, my God. Dropout hoodies are over 500. I was not expecting dropout hoodies to catch up like that. Oh, yeah, a fantastic hoodie for oh. less than most T-shirts. Uh, this is actually a record. Huh. This is a record all around. Nope. Nope. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Hold on, let me double check. Yeah, it is not a record for profit. <laughs> it is, however, a record for the inverse. Ah, nice. Beautiful. Actually, no. No, I'd say the record for loss is probably the one where I cut into the bottom of the backpack. <laughs> that was a very expensive WAN show. <laughs> Nothing's going to beat that, like, ever. <laughs> so good oh man uh all right so <laughs> what like three or four more dan's ready for the super checks after party stream already so let's, Which we let's need just to get a couple to, more I'm, yeah i'm tired and you got places to be yeah i'm scooting through is, stuff is anyone right now. i'm trying to find them um a lot of these are just like uh tax write off let's go up <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh oh yeah okay uh, that's so an alarm. you're like, pack alarm? No, that's an alarm to do a thing when I thought I would definitely be at home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meanwhile, you're not going to be home for like at least an hour, if not more. <laughs> nice. Um, what is, uh, I got, I got one, I got one, I got one, I did it. Uh, what is Dan's, f oh, okay, I'll read the whole thing. I got my bread plush. Also, I want to expand on the question asked a couple weeks ago. What is Dan's favorite retro game? Oh man, does this even count as retro? PlayStation 1, this game called yes. Einhander by uh, Square, before they were Square Enix. It's a uh, side-scrolling space shooter thing. Extremely difficult, extremely complicated. It has like seven levels or something like that. You have ammo management, you have weapon management, you have placement management. It's one of those games that you get hit once and you're, you're dead, and then there's no checkpoints. You basically have to restart after you run out of lives. Um, so it's extremely skill-based. Excellent. So good. So, so good. Is, is PlayStation 1 even retro? No, the time, that was like five years ago that it came out. Glad you enjoy the tracksuit pants, Kevin G. Just ordered another pair of them, and congrats on losing 20 pounds. Heck yeah, keep it nice. up, brother. Good work. Uh, yeah, it's basically like uh, Square made Toho. That's a, that's a good comparison. Bullet hell, but also not. It's like a tech bullet hell game. Great. 10 out of 10. Luke, you are clicking things so fast I can't even read them. <laughs> you just want them all to scroll past. Yeah. Do they not scroll past if we don't <gasps> click show? I don't actually know. 
I, I don't but know. I if want I'm them to scroll past no matter what. Uh, okay, I just and I am actually one. I'm scanning to see like does this one have a question? That's all I'm looking for. If it doesn't have a question, I just zoom. Uh, someone asks, uh, "What kind of screws am I supposed to use with these magnet things?" Screws. Oh, well, they come with little screws, but they also just like have a hole in the plate and you could put any screw you want into it. So if you, okay, for example, I used uh, masonry screws when I, um, have you seen this? No, I don't think so. My gate in my backyard. <laughs> so I screwed, um, a, uh, I put a little strap across the, uh, or, or sorry, I, I put a little strap across the cable arch, like one of the big ones, and I put it on my gate. And then I used masonry screws on the other side for the metal plates. And I screwed them into like these bricks that are there. So when I open my gate, my cable <laughs> management arch holds it open. <laughs> Everything else I tried, like I would, I would wedge stuff under it and the wind just kind of rips through there and slams the gate shut. But that would hold. But this holds. So I'm very happy. <laughs> for, for Gondor, dude. Let's go. Uh, man i'm just clicking show on things i'm clicking i'm clicking so hard i'm trying to i'm trying to david yeah, s says down. right off i'm rich bitch. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh man people are ordering so much stuff our 3pl is like screwed um Okay, we already kind of answered that earlier, so forget it. Um, hi, Luke. I applied for a software engineering role, and I'm curious, does your team often hire U.S. citizens? Thanks. Yeah, but as contractors, not employees. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, show. You got anything, Luke? Come on. I'm, I'm scroll. Uh, so many of these are like, uh, Aussie here, thanks for the free shipping. I work, I study, I sleep, the tired never leaves. FPGA gaming's cool, Chase. <laughs> um, okay, here, how about this one? I got one for you. Here, Luke, here's one for you while I continue to go through things. Okay. Oh, you curated it. Yeah, yeah, I okay, curated okay, okay, it. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, uh, this is a good one from Travis. Hey, Dynast Duke and Oh Glorious Dan, leader of all, what current product of yours do you think will get a V2 first? What favorite product of mine? I know the answer to this. What? Oh, wait, it says current product. Damn, I was going to say WAN hoodie V2 because it, like, happened already. Oh. Um, hmm, V2 out of current products. Backpack? No. Would you consider the costed down one a V2? No, that's a okay. separate product. They'll coexist. Okay. And like the backpack with the actual double layer and yeah, the no, 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 no. That, that one's one point one. That one's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was I was only saying that because of the the costed down. One. I mean, we'd be crazy if we weren't examining based on how many we've sold. We'd be crazy if we weren't examining like a screwdriver V2 at some point. But <laughs> at sure some as heck point, won't come first. Yeah, I don't I don't think that needs to come. That's soon. years away. It's yeah. a really good screwdriver, and there's nothing that outcompetes it. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue to sell it and amortize the costs of development for as long as we uh, as long as it makes sense. Um, it's a really good screwdriver. What would get a V2? I don't know. I, I could see us. I could see us rejigging Northern Lights desk pad, doing like kind of just an updated style, but still, you know, Northern Lights. But then there's so many opportunities for design. Like, why not just do something entirely new? Too much of our stuff. Not that this is actually a problem. I'm, I'm using the term "too much" as if that's bad, but it's not a bad thing. Too much of our stuff is like so overbuilt that like, what are you gonna do? What, what do we, you got it right the first time? Yeah. How are you gonna V two this? I don't know. Whatever. How about towels? V two two for towels? towels. Can you make them more absorbent? I don't know. Well, we could update the design a little. Can they? Are they flying carpets now? Um, I don't know. Uh, anyways, hey DLO, I'm about to graduate and need advice on joining the software engineering workforce. <gasps> I've only ever been a tech sales consultant, <sighs> and I have yet to give ideas for a side project. What should I do slash make? Um. <laughs> oh no! I know the answer. What? 
Something you're really passionate about. Oh, there you go. Something that says something about you. The free one. Got him. Yeah. Got lots of updates on labs, Shane. Oh, L. kids book. A V2? Yeah. I'm not going to do a V2. Why? Because I would write a different book. Yeah. That's that, not a V2. That count? No. I would do the alphabet of gaming or something like that. Why don't you do it? <sighs> you have time. <laughs> sure. Sure. Just write one on the plane. <laughs> oh, bit. Yeah. What are you just. What yeah. Are you, you're on vacation. Just write. Continue yeah. working. What's wrong with you? If Vaughn can drive to the work. plane. And you can write it in the passenger seat. I yeah. probably could write it on the plane. <laughs> a. The Apple. fact, the fact that the author of like basic kids books gets first billing and the illustrator goes second is a crime. <laughs> yeah. Sarah put so much more work into the first book than I did. Yeah. She did a great sense. job. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> Shay made me read. I want my hat back by John Classen and it's changed my life. I wish all kids books were that good. <gasps> um, Hey, DLL, so excited to see the mystery color. How do you all measure success in your lives outside of views on videos? It's so deep. It's so easy to just say happiness, but there's so many elements that contribute to happiness. It's like, it's one of those things where people, um, I feel like it's such an out of touch thing for people to say when they say money doesn't buy happiness because it's true. There are lots of people with a lot of money who don't really seem very happy. They seem, they seem angry. They seem depressed. They seem, uh, they seem lost, you know, but for most people, a lack of money. Yeah. I contribute significantly to unhappiness. There's a ton of people where money could solve the problems that are making them unhappy. Yes. But there are also people that money could not solve the problems and make them unhappy. But I think right now in our current economic climate, there is significantly more people that money could solve the problems. So I think <laughs> that I think if I was to say, OK, there's a measure of success, I would say it's to have enough. Not I think I think too much this of is, anything is, is in, bad. This is in your lives. This oh, in is our you lives. Personally. Oh, I mean. Well, then I'm just going to take the cop out answers like relationships, right? Like it's, uh, if I had, if I had the fastest gaming PC in the world and no one to play games with, what would it mean? Be worthless. Yeah. For, um, I, I often, oh, sorry. I thought you're done. No, no, go ahead. I often go on two things. Um, I don't necessarily need everyone to like me, but respect of peers is very important to me. Um, and then what is my like current, there, there's like a, an overall assessment you can kind of do. Mm. Self-satisfaction. Oh. Yeah. But not like in a smug way. No. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be the best. It just means doing your best. Yeah. And uh, like, how am I, I set out these previous goals for myself. Am I making previous version of me proud? Am I setting up future version of me for success? If these things are true, I'm probably going to feel pretty good about myself. doesn't have to be perfect, but am I doing a good job? And there's, there's like little, there's little things I'll try to do. Like if I, you know, I take the stairs when the next day comes, if I'm like, oh, I'm tired and I want to default to the elevator. I'm like, well, previously I got myself over to the stairs if yesterday me was able to do it, today me's got to be able to figure it out. And then that motivates me to get over to the stairs. I don't know. Little things like that. I always tell my kids, like, I don't... Are you trying your best? They know that there are two things that are going to set me off more than anything else. It's if they lie to me, and it's if they're not trying their best. Yeah. Um... And kids will do kids Half will do that budding. all the time. They'll they'll uh, we we went skiing um, a couple of weekends ago, and um, we were going up a little hill. And I, uh, my youngest, I was like, okay, so do the do the skating thing because I saw her do it the previous weekend, and she just went side to side. We had a chat <laughs> <laughs> because I have no problem taking off my board grabbing it and hauling her up the hill. 
I have no problem with that. I'm 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 happy. I like it. I'm a dad. Of course, I like you know carrying my little girl, right? But the fact that she didn't try, like if she tried and she was tired, or if she tried and you know there was a problem with her binding or whatever. Yeah, I'd, no problem swooping in. I'd love to help. Yeah. But if she's going to, to my <laughs> face, not do her best, to me, it's lying. It's, it's essentially the same thing. It's not being honest to me. It's not being honest to yourself. It's not, um, it's not respectable. I guess to your point. Um, yeah. Fortunately, she's still a little kid, and uh, I think she's she's getting a lot better, which is you which is good. Got it. This is the absolute best time for her to figure that stuff out. So like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Not something to dwell on. Okay. What? Why do I even read Twitch chat? Hey. What would be really cool is a very thin undershirt with long sleeves with thumb hooks so you could wear your uniform over it and gloves on your hands. So when you pick up a very gross person, you don't have to worry about their stuff getting on your arms, but also breathable. Good luck. It sounds like someone who's like a firefighter. Or yeah, or, or something like that. That sounds like a very specialized um, yeah. piece of equipment and not the sort of thing that um, <laughs> we're likely to have on LTTstore.com. Sounds cool, though. <laughs> also, good luck. Uh, yeah. Okay, one more. Pick a good one, Luke. I'm just, there's so many just like throwaway ones. It's crazy. Uh, and mine, I have mine only loading 75 so that it performs super fast. I went for the performance option. So it's not loading all of them. Oh, I was reading one that I thought was pretty good and then it just jumped. Oh, here's a good one. Jeff M asks, what do you think is the most important piece of equipment to not skimp on when getting into YouTube, not including the computer? Also, if you don't answer this, does it become a write-off? We'll never know. Um, I'd say the most important thing is a microphone. <sighs> Got him. Yeah. He was so ready. Did you see how ready he was? I was incredibly ready. He was like... He I was, was so ready. Physically ready, emotionally ready, psychologically ready, spiritually ready. All of them. Every part of him was ready. Yeah. He was sexually ready. Yeah. And I am sexually ready for us to see you again <laughs> next week. Super checked. Same oh, bad no. time. <laughs> same bad channel. Oh, uh, we're going to see you floaters. Uh, anyone subscribed to Float Plane, we'll see you guys yes. on the after party. We're going to play some super checks. Yes. Good night. Bye. Oh, my God. Whoa. It almost broke it. Oh, it looks like it's lagging. And it's like... Oh, my God. That was insane. That was sick. I love it. I can't believe how much stuff we sold at a loss. It's the time.